minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off. Does that feel good? Yeah. Feel good? It does. It really does. Just every Hello. time. Cool. Hello, Shaking Bakers. Uh, welcome to episode 15 of the Shaking Bake Show with Lyle, Burn His Eyebrows, Off Barnett, Stevie Broke, Nick Jackson, Courtney, Double Cabernet, Slice of Cake, Enders. She's about to pop her top. Do it live. Let's go. Let's have it. Let's go. Yes, we'll break a little of that uh, make and make magic that got us uh, got yeah. jerk in the winter circle last week. Mm. Um, I want to let all of our listeners and viewers know that I did make it alive out of the Lord of the Flies episode. The twister <laughs> storm did not take me out, although it was close. I did see some of the footage that was used and uploaded after my departure from the last show, and retaliation is in the works. We didn't do anything wrong. We didn't do anything. Yeah. That's a relative term. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, we had a really good racing event this weekend. We normally don't do this every week, but uh, when we have an awesome event, we actually had two events in an event like we did last week. Uh, we love to spend some time with you guys. I am on remote location in Itatiba, Brazil, uh, and where are the co-hosts at, and what are you ladies and guys? First, first question I have is, did you have to ask how to pronounce that before you came on the show? Nope. No, I didn't. I read, uh, so I have Google Translate, so I don't speak Portuguese well. I can say six words now. I just learned, uh, uh, I learned a word for, for something, and I forgot. I have five now. Uh, cool. but so been, you didn't learn it. Well, it's cool. What you're saying is my Google Translate app, uh, and uh, I'm I'm starting to get it, but I know where I'm at because my hotel's here. Just remember uh, when, when you when you texted me, I thought you were like singing a song, like I took a pill in Ibiza. You're like, no, yeah. I'm in whatever you're in. In yeah. Brazil, you can have any beer you want as long as it's honey. Well, that works. Well, I uh, I took a five minute trip to Bristol on Sunday. Briefly saw everyone. Came back. Started be locking the world yesterday. Continued my quest to be lock the world today, and here I sit on the uh, laundry room porch of our rental house in Robbins, North Carolina, shaking and baking with the rest of you fools. Good time to say parental advisory, explicit content, no kids allowed, because we are shaking and baking with you fuckers. Well, yeah. there it is. Well, and I'm time to put the kids to bed. Okay, I was gonna say I get to do my intro. I'm here in Fort Worth. I got the dogs on the floor. I got the champagne, the little mini bottle. Shout out to my friend, Kristen, who got me this. Um, we're going to Greece, and she got me that to celebrate. So tonight we're doing that. And I am very excited for this because the man who's coming on here in about 10 minutes, I have been a fan of since I was like nine years old. I've been a fan for at least that long as well. Yeah, well, I'm older than you, so the math is mathing. By how much? No one matter. needs to know. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I also very excited to see uh, to have our our guest on Ron Caps. Um, you and it's it's a testament to the competitors in our sport and how much most of all of us love to spend time with you guys. Um, you know, we asked Ron to be on. Ron has, has especially for a, for a top fuel funny car driver, pro stock driver. Right after a race race win, they're pulled in a million directions the first couple of days after a race. So for him to want to come on the show, spend a little bit of time with us, um, it, it just shows how much as competitors we love hanging out with you guys. And thank you, Hank. We appreciate That's you. Great. Yeah, I think he's he's heading off to somewhere early in the morning tomorrow. So he said, "I want to do it, but I need your earliest slot." <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Ron, I have w watched him run really bad for a while, really good, really bad. And that, watching him come into his own the last couple of years is really uh, – it's inspirational for me. So – I'm a big fan of, uh, of Guido as crew chief. Um, I met Guido at a hotel bar, I don't know, last year or the year before. Shocking. And, <laughs> yeah, really. 
And uh, we were till we talked pro mod and and some other things. And Lonnie Grimm and Ned Wallister were sitting at a table off to the side, and and Lonnie stands up and he walks over, and we talked all all of us for a second. And then for like the next thirty five minutes, I listened to Guido just absolutely grill Lonnie's ass about some fuel pump rule or some shit that I had no idea about. And Guido just went in on Lonnie's ass for a solid half hour, and it that warmed my heart. I was a Guido fan. Already, but from that point forward, I was like, "You are my favorite because I think Lonnie Grimm needs his ass grilled every day." But yes, I'm a big if fan. You were to, if, if, if I could set my alarm for six a.m. every day just to call Lonnie and grill his ass, what the hell they're doing over there? I would do. Mm. Yeah, we'll, we're going to talk about that later. I was going to say I got some bullet points to talk about that after we get <sighs> the champ off there. I've gotten to just observe and kind of watch from the sidelines for most of this year. And after this weekend, there's some shit that needs to be addressed. But anyway. We do have a few shenanigans. Uh, thank you. I would love some. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're getting served? We have a barbecue. Oh, God. <laughs> barbecue. Um, <laughs> oh, God. No, nothing. Brazilian meat is quality. Ask no questions. Ask no questions. Anyways, um, <laughs> so awesome train of thought there. Um, I don't even know what I was talking about. Whatever y'all we were saying. talking about, Lonnie Grimm, but we're going to talk about that oh, later. Yeah. So no need yeah, to so do that. After watching, uh, so when we get to that, Lyle, I want to make sure that you uh, bring us exactly back to the topic you're talking about because I also have some stuff that I want to talk about there. Um, before he, uh, before we bring him on, we'll cover funny car with him, but do you guys want to kind of run through the other stuff and get that out of the way since we've got two races or you want to handle Epping? What you want to do? Well, Man, it's, we can, we can get started on that. Uh, we can get started on Epping. Uh, we can, we can talk about, we got a lot of stuff. To I know that's what we got to fit it all in today. We can't go yeah. three hours tonight. No, no. Um, so if you guys didn't watch uh, or, or weren't kind of paying attention last week before the Lord of the Flies took me out, I got stuck in Jurassic Park and Twister wiped me off the face of the map. We had two races in Bristol. We finished Epping in uh, in Top Fuel Funny Car and Pro Mod, and we had a complete another race in Bristol also. So run us down with the Epping, uh, the Epping events of what all happened there, Double C. Well, I mean, just coming in hot, we got – I want to call him Mike Ashley every damn time – we got Justin Ashley, and we'll loop it in here because he posted the picture with the double Wally. Sometimes when you run two races in one weekend, you get a lot of those, but they're really – maybe there was only two classes, but he was the only double-up winner, just totally dominated the weekend. Leah qualified number one in Bristol, the only thing that broke him up from that, and that was pretty cool. Um, I love seeing him win. His dad is just one of the most energetic people on the planet of mm -hmm. Earth, and watching them on the starting lines, like watching me on the starting line. So I enjoy that heavily. Um, Lyle, take us through ProMod. At Epping? Yep. It was non-existent. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I was like, yes, it was. Well, it was, but it wasn't. Um, should we wait to talk about how that whole deal panned out, Stevie, or should we just talk? I think we should put ProMod of races. Yeah, that's a long that's a long topic, Courtney. I think we can break down funny car though. Uh the Tasca got a Wally for Epping, that's correct. He yeah. got his hometown win, but he wasn't at home, is what I heard yeah, on the he, He's trying to get some clam chowder, but he ended He's up getting, getting some it in clam Bristol. chowder and he got it in Bristol. He was a little lost, but that was pretty cool. They uh they're always a, a player, but um same deal. He didn't get it done on Sunday the next day. And so I always think that that's super fascinating because like I said, there's there's always those things, even rain day on Sunday or rain delay on Sunday. You never know what would have happened if it didn't rain, even breaking it up a couple of hours. And it's kind of wild to think about that, running it a week later at a different track, but then back to back days. And we had two different winners in funny. Cars, so that was pretty cool. It's really hard to go because I've only done this a couple of times. It's really hard to go to one race and carry enough stuff, especially for ProMod guys to run that thing hard eight runs and really it's more than eight because you got to factor in qualifying okay. for some of it, but it's, it's very difficult for us. And I told Sydney when we went up there, I said, I'm not used to having to rip on this thing eight times. Like we don't carry normally when we run one event, our engines and drive trainer beat up. Like we have to go take them back to the shop. We hone the blocks and do a valve job and make it nice. Uh, 
and I imagine for the fuel guys, it's not a lot different. You know, they normally carry eight engines, and uh, I would imagine they would need more than eight engines for that. Nasty's in there getting a the bath, so he's splashing around. <laughs> I, I was like, woo! Yeah. I wondered what that was. Yeah, that was nasty splashing in the sink. So that anyway. was pretty cool. On top of too fast, too tasty, all of that, I think that made for just a cra I don't even remember Saturday. I feel well, like and Pro Stock wasn't even involved in it, but it was just a whirlwind of stuff. So I got a, a fun story uh, for, for a little later uh, after, after Ron was off. But the, 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 the too, ta too Fast, Too Tasty Challenge in the classes, the, the two complete events in one, my head was on a swivel the whole time, and I still feel like I missed a, a majority of it. I tried to get to the stands and to the fence and to the starting line every time I could, um, and, and I still feel like I missed a lot of racing. So – if you felt like you did not get your money's worth in Bristol, something is wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, you were drunk. It's a really, really good event. I heard, a, I, think I heard a cool stat um, back to Top Fuel is the last person to double up the same day uh, in Top Fuel was Tony Schumacher, and his crew chief was guess who? My dream. Same. And I talked to some uh, Top Fuel crewmen earlier that day, and they talked about how – good Mike Green was at Bristol and he obviously proved that to me. Um, I didn't know that he was, I mean, I knew he was a good crew chief, but I knew he had a handle on it quite like that. But the last person to do it was Mike and he did it with Justin Ashley this weekend, which I thought was cool. Yeah. And he was with Tony so long and, and little fun fact that we'll get into with Ron here in a minute is Ron surpassed Tony as the winningest driver at Bristol. And I assume mm -hmm. I don't, I don't claim to know anything about top fuel, but I assume that most of those wins with Tony came with Mike. Andy, you did not see me cheering for JR uh, at Bristol. If you did, I thought I saw cheering. you with a crew shirt on. That's what I thought. Hey, uh, Matt, where's the beer counter? We need a Heine counter. A Heine counter. Um, I thought I saw you in a JR Gray crew, crew shirt eating a big old basket of fajitas on the car. Yeah, you did. Who, who won did the not. Too Fast, Too Tasty for Top Fuel? If our, if our fans can let us know. I did miss that. I think Tony went to the final. He either went to the final in Epping. Or went to the final in the too fast, too tasty. I was I think up he went there. to the final in Epping. It was a little confusing if you weren't like honed in. We were just watch, listening in the pit. I thought Justin actually won everything. I thought he did too. I think he might have. That's why I want to. I want to verify. But what a freaking and, clean house. And Gage Gage Herrera continued his just path of just Wait, pure we're destruction. Gonna get to that. He he almost continued. We're going to get to that. Well, uh, he did through but, Epping, but he yeah, beat him. Yeah. He still has not been beat by anyone else. He just beat himself. Well, and we, we mentioned that. We said it's going to come down to there's going to be some error. You cannot be perfect forever. You cannot be perfect that long. I mean, I remember in 2019, we're killing everybody uh, and we're le I'm leaving on everybody. And it just eventually you go red. Like I went red and, and, and for West Bucks race World Series of Pro Mod by a few thou because once you set that expectation of just it almost gets too comfortable and uh, you slide into a groove and and we're going to get to that. That was awesome. And uh, no, uh, Brandon, a lot of those rent were, rent, uh, wins were with Alan Johnson. Um, the run was with Alan Johnson, but Mike Green uh, tuned Tony uh, to a lot of wins. And Mike's really good. When you get him in a when you get him in a groove, he'll whoop up on them pretty good. Did uh, Tony win championships with Mike? Uh, that's up to you. I think so. Yeah, I'm not certain. I'm not, I'm not sure if he did that's or not. A question again i'm just a 500 inch girl in a lonely world okay. that's, that's brad clearing that up for us if you won epping you won the too fast too oh. tasty. it was contested during those eliminations thank you brad by the way oh, you're that I'm makes a, sense. I love buffalo trace you brought me i had a hole in it i need a warranty a warranty on that courtney still has not drank any of the wine that you brought her but it's still in my trailer so. I drank the whole uh, case of Yingling like that day. The entire. <laughs> what case. wine? There's wine. Yeah, we told you about this. Uh, well, to be fair, you got to tell me early in the show. <laughs> uh, cool truck, and it depends on what you come to the drag races for. Uh, I can kind of respect that comment, but it depends on when you buy your ticket, what you're after, and what you like to see. That's bad. Oh, speaking of MPK. Um, our uh, our fanboy uh, did not make the big show this past weekend and ended um, up in the, in like the 
D class or whatever it was and didn't win that either. So congratulations. Superstock Super D alter automatic stick shift yeah, class. Congrat congratulations, Scrotum. You had to run with the uh, daily driver class, rental car special, whatever you want to call it. I am I sure it's someone else enjoyed it. I'm sure it's somebody else's fault. Good night, Nash D. Oh, sweet boy. Sweet boy. All right, Nash D. Good night. And as Nash D goes to bed, I want to introduce and bring on your funny car points leader, one of my heroes, a man that stands in the loud pedal and needs no introduction. Run caps. There Woo! he is. The What's man. Oh, man. Right? Dude. Yeah, yeah, baby. Man, very good. good. How you doing? So you're in Brazil? Like Brazil, Brazil? I'm in. It a team up Brazil as we speak. And I'm getting to hang out with one of my funny car heroes. How about that? Wow. Drag racing uh, is international. And one thing that's so awesome about our sport is how it – you'd be amazed how many fans you have here. Like we're all sitting around at a barbecue bullshitting about drag racing and people are talking about how you're, you're, you're kicking ass. So it's good. That's cool. Yeah. Ron, I was telling the story before you came on that uh, – that last year, I think, or the year before, I met your crew chief at a hotel bar. <laughs> and uh, Guido and I were talking about Pro Mod and, and whatnot and a little bit about Funny Car that I just, I mean, I don't know anything about Nitro Racing, really. Lonnie Grimm was sitting off to our right, or my right, and Lonnie stands up and comes over, and we're all kind of chatting. And then all of a sudden, it was like you flipped a switch. And Guido turns to Lonnie Grimm and grilled his ass for like 35 minutes about a fuel pump rule, some rule in funny car. And he was just, it's bullshit. And this, that, and the other, you know, Lonnie does his typical, yeah, well, you know, we're going to have to take a look at data and we're going to have to do, oh, oh no, that's that bullshit. Lonnie. You're not going to do that. And it was literally, I just stood there with my arms crossed, like, you know, back and forth, listening to Guido go. And finally, when he was done, he was like, all right, see you later. And off Guido went. That was it. So on the next day, he's like, hey, man, how you doing? Really nice to see you. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I listened to you cuss Lonnie Grimm out for like an hour last night, Guido. But yeah, good to see you too. Good luck today. <laughs> but it was awesome, man. I, I love Guido. He's a good dude. Yeah, yeah, he is. I just got off the phone with him, and uh, I said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm looking at run data. And I'm like, because back east, what time is it there? It's 8 o'clock, right? Back east. Yep. And I go, where are you at? He goes, I'm in, I'm in the trailer at the shop. I'm like, just won the race. He's sitting <laughs> in the trailer with T-Buck, our assistant crew chief, and they're going over run data from the final. And he was screaming on the radio before the final. He wanted to put more primary on it, right? And he, he goes, I, and we didn't have time. They were rushing us. And I'm thinking the same thing he's saying. He's like, you know what? We're going to lose this race, and I'm going to be pissed at myself for not putting more clutch on it. And it it was close. It could have been the difference. But it's funny how uh, that little bit could have meant the difference. Yeah, for sure. It's always that little bit like that. Fans ask all the time, what, what's the difference between qualifying first and eighth? It's always a series of very small decisions. Yep. And uh, tell us a little bit about your year. I mean, you're, you're leading in points. What's the highlight so far of your year and the low of your, your season so far? We're getting closer to the countdown, and uh, I know you guys are gearing up for that. Tell us, you know, in, in what you do being on a, a different level from where we are, what's the, the high and low of your year so far? It's been nuts the last couple of years. You know, the ownership stuff has been crazy. Like, I can't even believe – I'm sure you guys think the same thing. You can't believe it's June already, right? It's just yeah. time's yeah. flown by. And we all kind of – in NHRA anyway, you just kind of drudge along, try to do the best you can and get ready for the countdown. It's just – it's rinse and repeat, just same thing. But in the meantime, you know, the crew chief's trying to figure out if we get a, a good batch of clutch discs like we have now, they're torn between – taking them and putting them in the trailer and saving them for the countdown or learn a little bit more and maybe take a chance that the next batch that we have that we put in that, that, you know, insert one into that six disc will be okay. So, you know, I talk to Guido every day. And then on top of that, I got all this ownership stuff that I've been, you know, it's like going back to night school for me as a business person. And it's just clouded everything I've, I've driven, I've been a paid driver for 27 years. You know, I drove for the snake and all I had to do was bring my helmet and show up at the track and do my, my sponsorship stuff. And so those days for me are gone, man. It's just it, but I love it. I love every bit of it, but it's, it's just uh crazy, crazy. How hard, how, and I, I say this cause this is a loaded question. I already know the answer, but the fans, maybe not. How hard is it when they, 
lower the body on your car to stop being a team owner and be a race car driver. I was thinking how bad we need. It's hard. I know I got, it is. It's, it's, the worst, it's the hardest thing for me. So I wanted to hear yeah. this one. I, yeah, I don't know how you guys do it, man, because you guys are all over the place. At least we know where we're going to be. We have a schedule. But, yeah, I I, uh, I got beat on a whole shot by force last year. Um, there was an oil down in front of us. It was the maybe the semis at Phoenix or something. But uh, I was sitting there, and I was thinking about some invoices that needed to go out and some other things. <laughs> and I just remember I got drilled. I, I didn't have a bad light, but afterwards I said, no more. That's enough. And uh, – before the final, I was thinking, oh, my gosh, we a win would be so nice. We've been in three final rounds and come close. And the difference in our, you know, for at least from my perspective and my sponsorship, it, we're on a pretty good bonus program, uh, bonus driven. So, I mean, race wins are a big deal and right. runner ups are not race wins. So, um, yeah, even in the final round, I was back up to the burnout going, my gosh, man, it, it'd be nice to get a win and not another runner up financially for the team. And then I, I'd, I'd yell at myself in the helmet, like, shut up, stop thinking about that. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of that stuff going on in my helmet anyway. And I'm just, it's a constant battle to, to try and keep it out. If Are there any like see- practices? Oh, sorry, Stevie. I'm going to bust you there. Are there any like practices that you do? Because it's, it's the same way over in our pit and Friday and Saturday are one thing, but once you get to Sunday, a big part of my, you know, volunteer paycheck that I get is I try and make sure that everybody stays in their lane on Sunday, do you feel like you kind of do something like that on race day and you're in a different mode where you're really trying harder? Or is it still just Ron caps is Ron caps every day? We just, do, it's funny. We do the same thing. Even Guido and I go into race mode on the warm up. You know, I, I do everything. We never talked about it. We just both did it. When we got put together last year, you got to remember Tobler retired like two weeks before we went to testing in 21. And at the same time, Don was about to furlough that whole Jack Beckman team. Like they were uh, that next day, he was letting them all go. So they were all going to have to look for jobs. And it was just a matter of like 47 hours, literally, that Toba retired and then we got put together. So, and we went on to win a championship. But the first race we showed up in Gainesville, um, and Guido said, I, I got one issue. I, I've had a push break you know, in this car and I've driven for 27 years with a pull brake. So as you guys know, that is a huge, huge thing. Like I've jumped in nostalgia cars and I mean, everything's been a pull brake for me. And uh, so that was hard. I almost ran over crew members in the staging lanes, pulling up there a couple of times because I would forget and I'd start to pull on it. But um, we kind of hit the ground running. But yeah, to answer your question, I, we, we just, we never had to talk to each other. It seems like we've always been together on the same page. And he grew up working for Austin Coyle and he's got so much Austin Coyle isms in him. Like it's so <laughs> funny to watch him, but that's what makes him great is he's, he's not just on the computer. He's down there looking at parts and he's really analyzing stuff old school. And, uh, and I just try to show up and do what I did with Ed McCulloch or Ron Leong. And, and that's just to make my crew chief as proud as possible uh, by being the best driver, warming up, burnouts, everything. So, yeah, I, we just go into this whole different mode on Sunday, and it's uh, there's never been any talk about it. We just do it. And that's because you got a, a, a bunch of folks around you that, that are like-minded that want to win, and that's, that's what it takes to do what you're doing. I want to go back to clutch discs. Me and Phil Schuler have had more conversations <laughs> about clutch discs than what I care to hear about. Yeah. It's like, I'm like, Phil, why'd you run like shit this week? Oh, we got this disc, this, that, blah, blah, blah. So they always fans, trust this, right? It's always an excuse. Yeah. So fans in the chat are asking, uh, you know, when we talk about a good or bad batch of clutch discs, I, I kind of know the answer, but again, they don't. Tell us what, because what Ron's saying earlier is when you get a good batch, you don't know if you're going to be able to follow them up. Tell the, the fans what what you mean what what's a good and a bad batch of clutch discs so in a nitro car there's six discs five floaters and so you rarely will a crew chief get a bunch of discs and and have a, a pack of six that are something new and so for the fans at home when we order clutch discs we try to i mean a, a terry haddock or a dale creasy can't do this but we try to order a bunch of them and you could have them made the same day we get them from bonifani you could have them made the same day and they're not, they're not always going to be the same, but when we get them, they come in these batches and they're marked by months. 
basically. So they could make them the same, exactly the same way, but they, they just are, some are a little harder, some are a little softer, some wear a little differently. And enough that we have to take these floaters for the fans watching, you guys already know, and you got to sometimes add these little grooves and cut grooves into them. So they actually cut on the disc. It, it's so elaborate what they do. And it's amazing. These cars even go down the track sometimes. But what happens is we'll get a new bunch of discs, you know, let's say a couple hundred of them. And when we order them, we order them like $25,000 and $30,000 at a time, which would blew my mind as an owner uh, for the first time. Cause I'm, I, the first invoice I got, I go, man, is this going to last us the rest of the year? He goes, no, <laughs> we're gonna, yeah, yeah. A couple more months and we're going to have another back. So, that I never thought I'd ever see in my bank account or write checks for, but so they, they, what they do a good crew chief, that has got a handle on his tune up. will insert one disc into that six disc when he knows he's running out of one batch of a month, a month of whatever he had before. So it's very, they're very weird about, and you talk about Phil Billy, they're very weird about their discs. Uh, it's almost like every crew chief's got his little, fuel pump that he likes or whatever he does, but the clutch disc, man, that is like, that's, it's like they're, it's like they're, uh, they're all these expensive chefs, right. On all these cooking shows and they've all got their little seasoning and their utensils that they use. And that's they if they come to a new team, they've got to bring their little thing and their little disc and what they run. And so it's very, uh, it's a very little clicky thing. Yeah. If you want to, uh, if- and me talking to Phil Billy throughout the last decade, if you want to ruin a nitro operation, bring in a new clutch program. Yeah. For about a year, everyone there hates their whole life. And I have heard more. About, I know more about clutch discs than I should. And like, it's just I'm like, what are you doing, Phil? Uh, when I, when I toured DSR the first time, the fab shop was awesome. Fuel pump room, the engine room, but the clutch disc room, I was like, holy shit. Like, what are you doing? Just put some discs in there. And they're like, everybody's like, it's the secret handshake. They're like, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. And there's cool. clumps of them. There's like, well, Okahara didn't like those. Phil didn't like those. Zippy didn't like those, but he, he didn't work well. And every crew chief has a thing. And then they, then they barter. Like, <laughs> I think they like those. And they'll go in there and say, I'll give you some of these for some of those. It's nuts. I'll trade you for October 2021 yeah. for you 12 I have heard that same. Ex- you're not. You're not even far from the truth. It's hilarious. Whenever I, when I licensed with Randy Meyer in the A fuel car, we were talking about because I've never driven anything with the clutch set up like you got. That was my first time, you know, stepping off of a clutch and then bumping one in and, and whatnot. And I was kind of asking questions, and Randy was like, "Yeah, you know what? These are we we order a clutch disc two years in advance, so the clutch disc." batch that he is moving into or has moved into now is what he ordered i think when covid started and like that's when kind of everything went array and shit kind of got weird and so <clears throat> he's calling this season of clutch disc that he's got a bad batch you know and he's like man we're having to pull some old stuff and i had some old stuff put away that we're having to pull out and all this and i was just was blown away i just figured you got a clutch pack out pack of disc threw them in there put some of your dingleberry deals on there to make them spin this way and fingers do that and that was it and that's just absolutely not the way it works so i got a little taste of that whenever i licensed with randy back in november and they are in a bad <laughs> clutch disc season right now yep. according to him yeah so as team owner ron caps what you know i'm a, i'm a very uh courtney and i see you we got a few, uh, few questions coming i'm very interested i watch how hard you work at marketing I watch all your stuff, winging it with Ron, how frequently you're on social media, how much you approach as team owner being a job. Um, for, for people that are that are wanting to get into a team ownership role, how important is it that you have your your hat on every day of, of, of working like that? Well, how do you gain that work ethic chasing money like that, I guess is what I'm trying to ask. I, I was lucky. You know, my dad, my, my mom and my dad raced when I was a kid, so I was kind of all around that but we didn't have a whole lot of money like but but my dad would win a lot you know we didn't he, he knew uh i learned a lesson early we didn't have we'd go go-kart racing and we'd pull in this little open trailer piece of junk like a landscaping trailer and we put two by fours across it my brother and i would show up and they'd be 18 wheelers and we would smoke these guys and put them back on this little open wheel trailer and, 
and go out of there with the with the uh, trophy. And so our dad then instilled a lot in me early on. And it wasn't until, you know, my first big break with Don Perdome that I kind of saw how he operated. And there was a reason he's the snake for all these years. Um, and then we went to a couple IndyCar races. You know, I went with him and I watched how he pointed out with Penske. And I mean, little things like, and I've said this before, like even the scooters out in front are perfectly aligned, like not one parked next to another. And you'd think that would be something dumb you shouldn't worry about. But to those guys, it bugged them. And I mean, everything, the way it looked and just being around him for nine years that I drove, I watched and just observed the way he operated and how he approached because Don Schumacher is a big business guy, much like a Colette or somebody snake. That's all he's known, right? He, he was a painter, but that's all he's ever done. So it was fun to watch that part of it. And then I went to Schumacher's and saw a business guy and how he operated. And, um, so I have always I've been lucky. I've never had to bring a sponsor to any of my rides. I've always been hired, which is cool. And it's it's a sort of a feather in my cap. I, but I've always woken up like I was an employee of that company. And I, that's just when people ask me that, what's the best advice? I go, that's the advice. The day that we COVID happened at Florida, right? We were all going to Gainesville. We had to turn around uh, and fly home. And on the way home, I came up with this idea to do a virtual handout card like I, I was taking my little thing and editing an autograph and having people on twitter send their info and it blew up it, it got too big for me to handle for a while but i was just like man what am i going to do to keep a job because i was a paycheck you know i had house payments to make and i didn't know what don schumacher was going to do and i relied on all that and you know none of us really knew how bad it was going to get but so i was scrambling like what could i do to be to, to be more relevant but um that's just the way I've approached it. You know, just, you know, I learned a lot watching those guys probably is probably the best advice I give people is just act like you're an employee of that company and wake up. How can you be better that day? Uh, no matter what you're doing, the racing part is easy, right? For sure. And I've had Napa tell me, it, I don't even have to win. They tell me that you do so much for the company and what you do with all of our people on the ground. Um, it's great. You win, but, you probably don't have to win, which is the biggest compliment you can get from a sponsor. Yeah, for sure. So. Whenever you did switch over, Ron, you know, you said you went from bringing your helmet and being the star and being the guy, whenever you did make that switch, I mean, we all know how that went on a success level, but going into that, tell us a little bit about your mindset of kind of where you expected it to start. I mean, everybody wants it to start with the way that it did, but a realistic, you're a businessman, you're, you're a realistic human. What did you think was going to be that first year? Well, I knew first thing, and again, working for snake, this, that's the first thing he used to have this saying, uh, you can't win the Kentucky Derby riding a mule. And it's the truth. Like you, you could take an Earnhardt when his heyday and you could throw him in a 10th place car and he might be able to make that car eighth place, right? At, at the best. But if it's a hunk of junk, you know, um, especially in drag racing, you're, oh, you, and I tell people all the time, you, you could be a road racer at NASCAR. You could be a NASCAR and have a bad lap and you can make up a better lap that next lap and make up for it. And drag racing, especially our cars that you drive and I drive, you can't make it any better, but you can certainly make it worse. Preach it! Preach it! That's my favorite <laughs> saying. It tells me all the time. You can't make it better. You're just going to screw it. Yeah. There, there's, you could give me – Guido could give me the, the record-setting run, and I could go out there and ruin it in a heartbeat, but I'm never going to make it any better than he's given it to me. So I um, forgot what your question was. Oh, oh so just, the, just going into it. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. So the first thing I did was I knew that I had to have, and I approached Guido and the, the guys before the season was over and they were all in for going with me, but I knew I had to have a good crew chief no matter what I had to have. a. That's key. And I learned that for Don Perdome early on. And then the second thing. And the third thing was I knew that I had a publicist, Allison, who I'd worked with a DSR and I knew that was huge. We'd, we'd done the Howard Stern show. She got me on there a couple of times, things way outside the box that I loved that she, she does. And, uh, and then social media, uh, Cassandra who works, you know, for, um, Steve Torrance's wife, um, Cassandra had worked with us at DSR as well. And she had been in drag racing, Mark Powick's daughter. And I loved how hard she worked and how she thought outside the box. And that was the three things that I knew that all, if we had that, we had a good car and we had those 
other two things, um, it would it would all just be okay and at least be okay. But we ended up winning the championship. I didn't expect that to happen the first year. I love that you give those that credit there too, because a lot of teams, you know, we we talk about racing, we talk about results, we talk about crew chiefs, clutch discs, and I'm gonna shut you two drivers up here for a minute. It takes more than that to make these wheels go around. And I really appreciate you've always been very vocal about that with Allie. My God, she's amazing. She we texted her this morning and she got you on here is amazing. Um, and Cassandra too. So I think that a part of a huge part of the reason why you're so big famous, isn't the right word. You have a huge voice. You're, you're everywhere. Napa know how, but you're doing your own social. All that is because you get it. There's not a lot of other drivers. I think who come into it wanting to help build that. They're just like, who's my PR person. Who's my, this person. And you freaking get it. So there was no question there. I was just patting, patting your back on that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, Go ahead, Lyle. Ron, you, you spent most of your career driving for someone else, as you've said, and you've recently moved into the team owner role uh, and, and driving for yourself, essentially. Does, is Ron Caps a team owner for the rest of his career or if the opportunity arose and somebody wanted to buy Ron Caps Motorsports or you got approached by, I don't know, let's just using round numbers here, Tony Stewart wanted to just absorb, like, do you stay where you are because this is – kind of how you want to finish it out or would you go back to what you did before? Yeah, no, Lyle. I mean, I've always wanted to do it and I'm glad it kind of, it didn't happen when I was thinking about trying to do it earlier in my career. I don't think I would have been ready and it just, things wouldn't have worked out. Um, so with that being said, I, I'm, yeah, I'm hooked on the ownership part and, but I just wanted something that I could, I could not rely on somebody in my livelihood um, like during COVID scared me. I was on the phone, Don Schumacher is on the golf course talking to me and I'm pleading with him to keep my salary where I could afford my house payment, you know, it, it, and I didn't want to have to go through that. And he's earned that. I'm not giving him a bad time. That's he's earned every bit of that, but I didn't want to have to worry about, and you guys know what I'm talking about. You don't want to have to, I'd love to, I can't wait until I find somebody to put in one of our next cars. Not necessarily, maybe if I retire in my car, but I always, you know, I grew up working on alcohol cars. So I grew up around the Jay Paynes and the Bruce McDowell's and the Pat Austin and Blaine and Alan Johnson. And so I worked on cars growing up. So I get it. I get that part. And I can't wait to find the next, you know, whoever it might be, the next Austin Proc or whoever it might be. Or one of you two jumping in a funny car. Say, I mean, how cool would that be? Come over Lyle, for ready. Deal with you, Lyle. If you'll go <laughs> find some money, yeah, well, by the car, I will blow it up every single time. We <laughs> we'll, 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 then we'll I'm just, in. Ron will be like, "Listen, we're out of funny car bodies, <laughs> of and all the even the bad clutch discs you've already torn up. So like, you're gonna have to I'm, get out." I'm confident uh, that uh, it, it wouldn't be too bad because Ron still has a really nice set of eyebrows and he has blown up and been on fire <laughs> and done all kind of things. So the fact that he still has his gives me hope that if I can one of his cars, at least it can't get any worse, right? Like, like we can tie this thing up. Well, hell, you can't lose him way. again, Lyle. Jeez. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. He still has his. Therefore, none of the fires or catastrophes he's been in has caused him to lose his. Have so you guys ever good. warmed? Have you warmed a nitro car up even? Uh, uh, a, a I like a a Greek's car and warmed it up one time, uh, and it, it was absolutely awesome. The Greek is like hollering at me. I don't know what he's talking about, and I just want to bark the throttle, and uh, it's great. Um, but speaking of funny car racing, People, well, a lot before of you go on, Stevie, if you're offering Ron, yes, I will. Right, if you need me, go on, go on. No, go on. I, 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 I think that out there. Hey, the drag's is fine. I, I did that for a year and a half before I got into funny cars, but there is nothing like you're sitting there and that thing is banging and popping right in front of you. I mean, and the drive shaft goes right between your legs. <laughs> okay, it, I know I'm not a driver. I know I'm not is, a driver, but y'all get to do all the fun stuff. Let me do it, Ron. <laughs> yeah. We'll work on that. We'll get you in for a warm up, man. It's something uh, everybody should be able to experience. It's pretty cool. Look, Lyle's having Lyle. You need a defibrillator over there. You want me to shock you back to life? <laughs> I need uh, something. The defibrillator probably ain't gonna cut. No, but how do you wear a gas mask with that big beard? That's I don't I'm not gonna wear it. I want to breathe it all in. I just, <laughs> good, good parental advisory time. 
You ever Ronnie, seen that? There ain't, there ain't no pussies in the Hall of Fame. My mom didn't raise no bitch, so we're just sitting there <laughs> you know, and take her in. <laughs> you know how the Incredible Hulk turns green and got swollen up when he got yeah. radiated? That's what happens to me when I breathe nitromethane. <clears throat> All up good. stronger and faster. Good. Um, fans, uh, I think a lot of times forget how dangerous what we do for a living is. Um, and there's a lot of classes that I feel are on a safe level. I feel like Nitro Funny Car Racing and Pro Modified Racing kind of uniquely put the driver in a, in, a, in a very adverse situation from the beginning. And I just want to say, like, when you guys go through there and I watch one of the bodies come off of those cars, I've never been in that kind of uh, percussion. But it, it's, uh, it's impressive to me that you guys get back in there again and do it because – uh, that it's badass. I've driven alcohol funny cars, and that's badass. Uh, and I can't wait to drive a nitro car. You guys are, are awesome. I say you guys are all crazy, all three of you. <laughs> nah, man, you I will crazy. drive your funny car with Lyle sitting in my lap and let him hit the gas. <laughs> and we'll go down there, and I'll be like, <laughs> okay. I want to talk about Bristol for a minute. Here, we got to get back on track. Ron's got an early flight in the morning. Oh, yep. Sorry. You? No, I'm, good. I'm good. I'm on the West Coast. It's only okay. Good. Five o'clock. I'm good. Well, I have a I have a very unique view in the drag racing space. I always brag on this. I get to see all the behind the scenes stuff. I get to be with you guys down there in the truck. And it was really cool watching you with your guys at the top end. And they're like, finally, this is amazing. And me with Erica, we're having the same feelings, but much, much worse. Haven't given we'd won one round this year. Um, but you guys have had a good year. You were f sitting first in points. But that win, what is it about like getting that first win of the monkey off of your back, regardless of runner up of semifinals, all of that? How does that kind of just shoot the trajectory for the rest of the year for you? Well, Guido put it right. And he, he said it after in the winter circle. He said, we took the points lead over before the final round and we hadn't won a race this year. So, you know, Hagen won two, uh, Robert, everybody kind of won one, but we were just consistently there and we lost those three finals. I felt like, it was my fault on two of them. I maybe let the car get out. We probably should have won two of them. Maybe you never know, but um, it was just more of a relief, Courtney. Like I got out and I was, that was, I was more relieved than the excitement. And uh, for a lot of reasons, the ownership side of it, I was like, yes. All right, finally. So <laughs> Monday morning, Napa is going to get that and they're going to be happy. And Toyota stoked. Um, but yeah, it was like, okay. You know, we lost three final rounds. This could be a long year if we're going to go about that. But, um, yeah, I yeah, I just uh, – you never know. And these two guys will tell you the same thing. You never know if you're going to hold one of those wallies again. And even like Eric, I know – here's the funny part. After Media Center, Alex says, you know, it's only been seven races since you won your last race. And to me, it felt like a year and a half. Like, And I was like, what? Seven races? It seemed like forever. So – Again, you just get spoiled sometimes. So the car is hauling ass and you're you're doing well and everything's going good. You just you expect it. And uh, and that's a bad thing sometimes. And I found that out. So I, I, I just I was so excited to hold that thing again. And I wasn't lying when I said you never know if we're going to see one as big as sponsors of I, I have the best crew chief. Doesn't matter. Um, funny car as pro mod is anything you guys do. It is hardball man it is so hard to win a round let alone win a race and that's why drag racing is the best sport on the planet we don't yep. get do-overs i can't catch you next lap uh i have to be perfect today and still might not win and, and that's why our sport's so great when you talk about that it when i won um charlotte last year i really had got to the point and again like we act like it's been forever it had been about eight months and i'm like i'm never gonna win again you're never gonna yeah. win Never going to win again. And I know talking to Erica, you know, you're talking about like she, if she you, was if ready to retire eight months ago. Like if Erica would win again, they would be like, she'll win next week. Right. Yeah. yeah. But when you're used to doing well, I think it start. I think you start to think about it. Uh, and, and then when you start thinking about messing up, you mess up just like yep. when you when you're having fun. Uh, like I told Erica when he got off the show this year. I mean, last week I said, if you go have fun, you're going to win. And uh, it was good to see you win. I like seeing you win. Every okay. time you win, Ron, I swear we're right behind you. We've got this weird, like, if Caps wins, we win. Like, it's a weird yeah. thing that that it started last year with a couple of your crew guys. But as soon as you won, I came back and, like, 
in the car because she couldn't see and she literally on her thing she goes we're winning <laughs> <laughs> um ron you know i and just from the outside looking in i think justin ashley has been a huge influence on kind of the ch the change that's came across the nitro class as far as needing to be a performer on the starting line you know whereas before i mean growing up and i've been watching nhra drag racing for as long as i can remember and if you had a dominating car if you had the field covered by i don't know let's just call it three or four hundreds it was just natural that if you could keep it together you're probably going to win right you know or you're going to be there in the later rounds but justin ashley i think who is you know obviously one of the best levers in top fuel or maybe the best statistically kind of changed that and as a driver uh, and your relationship with your crew chief and how you guys how you guys work together. Have you guys had to make changes um, as far as the way the car is set up or maybe the way that you drive or the throw in the pedal? Is, is there anything that you guys have had to change as that change has kind of happened over the past couple years where your starting line performance is everything? And I know that it's always important, but it seems now more important than ever because you're seeing top fuel races that are within a hundredth or two one by three, four, five, six hundredths because there's such a big starting line gap. So what kind of changes have you guys made to kind of start preparing yourself or, or now you're, that's important? Well, I mean, lucky with Guido included, I've had crew chiefs for the most part, you know, even like Ace and guys like that, um, Tobler, they, they all work pretty hard at the driver's area as well. Like without even me even saying anything, Guido, especially, he was always on it, you know, cause he was around coil and linkage wise, this and pedal that. And I've never asked anything um, or to change anything. And I, I don't know. I, for me, when I came into funny car, I came in as a rookie in top field and then into funny car. I mean, I was playing racquetball tournaments and teaching racquetball. And I, I feel like my hand eye coordination there helped me. Uh, I was playing money tournaments and stuff um, when I was just starting to get, into driving or got my first shot at driving and I'm not a guy that and you'll never hear anybody on my team hear me ask what was my light in qualifying I mean there's guys I hear Hagen do it and I hear Justin and all those guys and Austin and I've just qualifying I you know I, I go up to make the best run and and if I want to try something different and qualifying I'll try it but I, I hear people talk and I probably should maybe I'm not doing it right uh, maybe I should be up there practicing leaving race day every single time but um you usually my crew chiefs don't have to worry about me on race day i'm, I'm gonna be there but I, I find myself doing weird stuff during qualifying i've always done this where i'll look away from the tree sometimes uh i will close my eyes or squint or look another direction just lead out of the corner of my eye and just weird stuff because i don't want to be surprised if there's a last minute something happens and instead of uh you know, being freaked out by something at the last minute. So I've always, I've always tried, obviously, you know, I do my best on Sunday, but I've always had good crew chiefs that were always there in the cockpit thinking about ways to make it better. Uh, the push break, that was a thing that Guido came up with um, that he feels like when the car leaves, having a push break may help it performance wise. I've had other crew chiefs and drivers that it probably does nothing. They said, well, who knows? So, yeah, I, I've been lucky in that sense. But uh, like Stevie said, you start trying too hard. You know, I've had crew chiefs and I've watched the best drivers in the world when I was coming up through the ranks. The guys I looked up to just get ruined and actually lose driving jobs because their reaction times got worse when it was the way that certain crew chiefs set up their clutches. They might run lighter tug um, or the way they run a fuel system or the way they run it. And it's so... And I have people that have come to me for advice when they come into funny cars or dragsters. And I said, you'd be surprised how much a tune up affects your reaction time. And if you try to make up for it in a fuel car, you're done. You're going to red light. You're going to do stupid stuff. So I, I learned that early on. And luckily I've been around owners that understood and, and, and weren't right, you know, ready to drill on you if you were late this or that and, you know, threatening your job. So I guess to answer your question, it's just been a lot of good crew chiefs that, thought about the driver's compartment are you push or pull break now push break he's been he's had a push break wilkerson has one and robert height has one i think that's it uh and again man that was a believe it or not that was a difficult thing it was probably one of the hardest things in my career that i had to get used to on the fly like we went right to 
testing them to Gainesville. And I had to go from 27 years of always driving any fuel car, fuel altered, anything with a pull brake. And now I had to switch everything around. It was, uh, was not easy. And, um, yeah, but it seems to work good for his setup. You said earlier something that, that intrigued me. You said, you know, this in NHRA drag racing, we just, we go to races, we get ready for the countdown. It's kind of just dog eat dog week in and out. How do you've been doing this for a really long time? Been a fan of yours for a long time. How do you keep such the passion alive? Like you've worked with some of the legends of the sport. You've seen so many generations of people. I don't mean this in a way that you're like a hundred by any means, but you've been successful for a long time. How do you keep that passion alive when we do something that kind of is monotonous in a weird way? Man, I just love, I love everything around it. I love, you know, I love the competition and the team where that's what I love about funny cars is compared to the dragster is, you know, like you're in the tunnel last weekend and they call us up and you're pushing the car and there's two guys and they're pulling on the body and they're walking. I, I get to watch all of it because the, the motor's there. So they're all around. It. They fire the thing up. There's four of them around it. They scatter, pull the starter off, drop the body down. It's so bitching being in a funny car in that sense. But I love, I love all the track stuff, right? But I love all the other stuff. I love going out at night, having dinner, some wine, talking about the day, um i love getting there in the morning and and the approach everybody's talking about the goal the crew chief here's what we're going to do today i just love all of that man it just it drives me and it's my happy place um i love the preparation of getting the car like again i, I grew up working on them so i just i love all of that and it, when it comes together it's so badass people have no idea it's such a great team sport even though it cannot be sometimes you got a driver up there trying to do their thing but you know, you've got eight or nine people to put this thing together that took all night, like hours and hours for you to F it up. Right. Like, here it is. Don't screw it up. And I, I love I love and hate that. But it, it's so cool when you do have a, a let's say the final round in Bristol watching back at the footage of my guys jumping up and down, you know, during the run, you could see everybody. And then the minute the light on the scoreboard goes off, they go ballistic and that elation. I just love all of that. Getting ready for that one moment that drives me. I mean, well, you, you can tell because it's, there's a lot of people that come in, they're stone right. cold ice, they do their job. But, but the reason I ask that is because you can tell that you still love this. And if, if you didn't, you're doing a damn good job of hiding it, but you can tell yeah, you still really absolutely. Isn't love it this. crazy? There's people around us that they, they're like, you talk to them at the track and it's like, they got this problem and yeah. all this and this. And you're like, why, in the, why are you out here? Like this? Yeah. Like, My problems were getting to the track. That was all the problems. <laughs> like, that was yeah. weird. What we right. do is a lifestyle. Like what we do is, is we, we love to do this. I, and I've, you, I've said this a thousand times. If we put in the hours that we do at this, we can make more money doing anything else. We do this because we love drag racing. Um, my guys, and that that when you talk about the team being around you, I use the analogy in our team meetings all the time. We're all in a boat going across the lake. We can either shoot holes in the bottom of the boat and sit on the bottom of the lake and drown together, or we can all paddle the boat in the right direction. And when you get everybody paddling the boat in the right direction at the right time, it's pretty special. Yep. Yeah, it is. My well, favorite thing to watch Guido do is – pull you in, tell you you're good to go, walk around the back of the car, take a look down the right side, yeah. and get one good clap. Right. That's it. Every right. time. You know, Crew like I love watching stuff like that. Crew chiefs are the weirdest, <laughs> yeah. weirdest animals in the world. Yeah. <laughs> if you see Billy Stocklin on the starting line, he's got a main jet tool that he doesn't use in his pocket. He has a 5 sixteenths and a 3 eighths wrench just in case the barrel valve need to be adjusted. And he is putting a dip in when I roll through the water box. If I ever rolled the car through the water box and Billy wouldn't put in a dip in his mouth, I'd stop and wait because I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't want to ruin it for him. And when you watch Crew Chiefs, like we all have this weird nuance about us. And it's just yep. part, of the, the part of our sport, and I love it. Oh, I hear you throwing yourself in the Crew Chief ring. I right. asked hey, you now. I'm, I'm retired. I'm, I know. I'm just saying. I I see. You. What's hey Stevie? What's your thing? What do you got in your pocket when you're up the crew chief and somebody? So when I'm on the starting line, uh, I have. I'm kind of weird. I have a, a pager for a weather, of course. I have yeah. a, a, a notebook in my pocket of all the runs that have been close to us. Back pocket uh, or front pocket? Back pocket all the time. Okay. I have. 
a it's kind of weird i carry at i carry a trans brake button with me in my pocket i cut the cord off of it okay. and it's just the button and it's in there because like you know people have fidget spinners when they get nervous well yeah. if i'm gonna play with something i want to play with something that, like i drive the car so that's in my pocket i have a piece of chalk in case right I need pocket to or left pocket right pocket all the time right pocket. Yeah, right. you don't want to you can't get off balance because the notebook's in the left rear so gotcha. you got to have the chalk and the trans brake button in the right I have main jet tool just in case hard time set in, and that's about it. Do you wear cargo pants? No. <laughs> I know. Oh, damn. <laughs> what the fuck do you carry all that? You shit? watch a crew Fanny chief pack? up there without a lot of shit in his pocket, and he's not Holy a good crew chief. Shit. Yeah. Do you have any tape? Any tape at all? No tape on the starting line? Electrical tape, maybe. <laughs> yeah, tape. yeah, I'm with Stevie. You, you oh, were in Hey, so Cord carries a, a a pair of channel locks, a Zeus tool, and a screwdriver, and some zip ties, and an airline plug with him to the start line every time, no matter what. We can uh, fix you can nearly fix anything with that. There you go. All that right there. You Ron, do you have anything in your pockets when you go down the drag strip? No. I've left my phone in there a couple <laughs> times makes by sense. accident. That makes sense. <laughs> I when I drove for Snake, I had some friends at the rock station in San Diego and they wanted to do like a live remote. We were joking. So I put my phone on while they were on the air and I put it in my pocket to hear what the car sounded like on a run at Pomona. <laughs> and they they had me on live on the rock station while my phone was on while I no. made a run in the funny car. Yeah, it was pretty funny. That's badass. <laughs> When that you say cool. things like like you just nonchalantly roll this off your tongue. When I drove for Snake, when I drove for this, like do you ever, my sister's really bad at this, like really stop and think about it and look oh. back at your career of like, not only holy shit, I'm Ron Caps, but like all the opportunities and all the people that you've been able to just learn from. Yeah, it's been crazy. I, I remember one year in Maple Grove, we flew in and uh, Snake said, we're going to, we're going to stop somewhere before we go to the track. And we went to Mario Andretti's house. Okay. And, uh, this is like my first year driving for him. And we roll up this house. He just had it built. And we first we went and picked him up at his old house, which I've seen on TV shows and documentary and stuff before. It's it's like a Brady Bunch house. It was like this old 70s house. But we go to his new house. We follow him over there. And it's 27,000 square foot house, I think it was. And he just kind of moved in there. And we spent the day there so much, so late, that I got there with the car in the staging lanes. I couldn't even warm the car up. We barely made it there for me to, to get in the car for the first qualifying run. But you talk about a weird feeling being in a rental car with Don the Snake Perdome, who I was driving for, but I grew up idolizing, and Mario Andretti. That was like one of those moments, and I'm like, what is going on in my world right now? Yeah, like this is actually life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, I have one. I have actually two serious questions. I know you're probably busy. Number one, because the fans are berating me with this in the comment section, does Ron Caps love fajitas? <laughs> That's Dude, right. Ron, Ron, Ron. No, Lyle, <laughs> shut up. I'm going to mute you, Lyle. Do not no, let the man this is a speak. Let, in our let right the here. champ <laughs> speak. We, I, speak. We live. Half an hour north of San Diego. There's the best Mexican food. I know where you guys live, Courtney, but I, I will argue we have the best Mexican food. And if I could eat it every night, I'll eat it. So I love Mexican food, uh, no matter what it is. So it's, uh, fajitas, yeah. It's not my go-to. Hallelujah. Wouldn't be my first choice, <laughs> but yeah, I, I do love but Mexican. You wouldn't, you wouldn't unfriend someone on Facebook because they ordered fajitas. No. Okay. All right, Lyle. All right, number Good two. Good night, question. Lyle. <laughs> Good night, Lyle. Number I two. I want to flip this question. fucking table. Well, over. is it just a cheese fajita, or has it got something in it? No, his issue is the smoke. Yeah. His issue is my the issue smoke. is the presentation of the food. Oh. Bring the shit on a plate, just like oh. like they do everything no, no, else no, no, in no. a Mexican. Shut up, both of you. Shut up. I'll yeah. mute you both. <laughs> just bring it on a normal plate. Why Stand does it have to come on yeah. a skillet? With, I mean, and I mean, it's like you need a Marachi band and like cheerleaders and Stevie yeah, with a main the jet. Real Mexican and, places don't do that. You're talking like Chili's and places. That's where you go, right? All the Mexican That's because he lives on the East Coast. Coast. Do they? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah if you order fajitas ones. here, they bring it on a fucking steaming skillet. <laughs> like eight bullshit. different platters. <laughs> they spray it down. While Lyle takes that moment to, to go back to his happy place. And All right. Say, oh, 
How do you win a championship in 2023? How do you keep yourself centered with the balls that you have in the air as a team owner? Because I know what it's like. How do you keep your guys, gals, and yourself focused to go win a championship? After last year, I mean, I, I would have had a probably different answer, Stevie, before this last year. And I always envied, you know, the run that Tony made. And these guys came okay. back. You know, end of the year, Pomona, last day, it's points and a half. We all know that. But I always wanted to do that and to do what we did and to to win over like Robert Heights team, who had an unbelievable season as well, and Hagen. And uh, to do that the last day of Pomona on the very last, I mean, mm. last two hours of the whole season was something that you can't ever explain. So I've done that now. I've checked that box. I want to, I mean, my dream would be to clinch – the championship like Eric has done in Vegas and be able to celebrate and not even worry about going to Pomona and actually be in Vegas to celebrate it right there would be the next cool thing. But yeah, I don't, I think just plugging away and do what we're doing. I, I learned that pretty early on in my career that don't get caught up in too much. And, and if we just keep doing what we're, we're doing, um, the car is going to go rounds and we're going to lose races here and there because people are going to, we got a target on our back. But for the most part, I think, uh, you know, we're going to win most of our rounds just based on our performance and how we do. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I, when I announced I was going into and I told Don Schumacher at Indy of 21, and then we went on to win the championship together, knowing that I was going to be an owner. Like there, I, I said it a bunch of times, you couldn't script that in Hollywood better, right? I'm going to be an owner next year, and then we win the championship. I'm going on my own. I'm going to have the number one in the car and all the – what comes with it is a championship my first year as a team owner and then win it my first year was fuck, it was something you couldn't i mean you can't even dream that like that was bizarro to do that so i don't know how we're gonna top it i, I, I say so constantly the drag racing gods are they are the most poetic writers on the planet of earth and i and i started telling this to erica to kind of keep her mind right but now i truly believe it like if there's a story to be written that's the way it's going to go down. Oh, and I won Indy. Like I tried to win Indy my whole career, 29 yep. years, right? And, and I won the call out the same same weekend, which helped me buy my trucks and trailers from, from Don, actually. I mean, it was that was a, another weekend. It was huge in my first year's ownership. You just can't, you don't, you don't expect that to happen. And so that it all just kind of happened that first year, which is crazy. I don't know if anybody's ever won their first year as an owner, you know, in nitro, I, I haven't thought about that, but it's just or nearly any class. I don't know. I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a big deal. Yeah. I, uh, it was an I stood, experience for sure. I stood on the starting line again. We, I get the pleasure of always watching funny car. I don't get to, t to watch a lot of fuel because we're not there, but we get to see the end of funny car. And I got to stand on the starting line at Indy and watch them give you that trophy down at the top end. And I have no dogs in this fight whatsoever. And Eric and I are standing on the starting line, like crying. It was one of the coolest moments I've ever witnessed in the sport, just because I've seen the whole thing. You've won everything in the world, all the things, you're on caps, all the things we've talked about, but like Indy getting that done. And that was one of the coolest things I've ever witnessed, man. That was awesome. Yeah, That's a sacred place, man. That was pretty cool. I have one more question before I'm done with you. Okay. <laughs> I got I got to throw in the flow racing thing here. So we love you on the flow racing side. You watch it. You are involved in it. Do you have any plans to do anything outside of drag racing um, on the dirt spectrum? What you going to do? Uh, I got invited to the SRX, which is that uh, Tony Stewart series with all the best drivers in the world. Yeah. I'm already getting <laughs> nervous about it. Uh, and I'm doing that August 10th at, they're all live on ESPN on Thursday night. They're bringing back Thursday night thunder. So uh, the one I'm doing is Eldora, which is one of the fastest, most insane high bank dirt tracks. Uh, you know, I'll be racing with Paul Tracy and Marco Andretti and Tony Stewart. And just, it's an insane list of people. So uh, I'll be representing drag racing in front of God in the world, trying not to screw up. Um, so I got that going on and, and, you know, I watch flow racing. If I'm on the road and back at the hotel or the motor home, I, I'm watching something, um, in fact, they're having midget week or right now going on. So I don't know. I'd love to do chili bowl, maybe one more time down the road, something like that. But I, I learned my lesson there last year. I, I left in an ambulance, so I probably should pick my battles a little better. 
You are our hero. Go out there on the dirt and whoop up on them. Yes. And when you do, let me know because I'm going to get them to send me out there and do some crossover <laughs> yeah, if you have stuff. Any, if you have any plans to go back to the Chili Bowl, I need a phone call because I'm fucking coming. All right. And yeah. I'll I'll need, like, I need a crew. Like tire guys or something. Please. No, hire hell me. no. No. <laughs> hell no. I don't want anything to do with the performance of that race car. Visor wiper, I'm your dude. I will yeah. spit shine well, that. You got to be a good beer drinker. Get Ron. Backpacker. The, uh, the Start partying and the, the every night. Deal. <laughs> yeah, I need that too. Yeah, he can also do that, Ron. He's, yeah. he's yeah. plenty good at that. If you yeah. get out front, you can have me and Lyle just get on the mic and talk shit to everyone and be like, y'all see Ron out there crushing your bitch ass? Like, do you see it now? Like, we'll well, You got to be ready to fight at that race. Uh, when, we're from the hey, south. Uh, I'm telling you, when you come off, the, when I drove Tony Stewart's midget there, the crew guy said, if stuff happens on the track, you come off and do not take your helmet off. We'll fight for you. And there was fighting every heat. I mean, it's Wild. insane. Wild 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 Wild. Wild. Dirt track car. <laughs> Stevie, that that is a, that's a damn sure way to end our career in one <laughs> fell swoop. Or, First trip to the dirt track, you and I are gonna pro kill somebody at. at at best. Oh, remember them guys that used to drive them pro mods? Oh, it's yeah. so weird that Courtney got her own show called The Shit Bake <laughs> with one person. It's so weird. Yeah. This is probably starring part Courtney of Anders and Ron Caps. I think right. we should start a team right now. Yeah, Let's get yeah, ready. Yeah. Come see right. the Shake and Bake show with Slice of Cake and Ron Caps. Yeah, so Ron, Shake and really Bake is on. Uh, any of you guys got anything for the for the champ before we go? No, I um, love it. I always got to give my my. BFF Dion, he's like the biggest Ron Caps fan in the world. So I always got to embarrass him and, and tell him that you love him, that he loves you. <laughs> Ron, I, I don't have a, I don't have a very good memory, but I'm not gonna forget anytime soon that it was even mentioned I could warm up the funny car. No, so. no, no, me first. So when we get to Norwalk, there's gonna be a foot race between me and Lyle. <laughs> Man, fuck. <laughs> Listen, let, let me tell y'all something. It is no holds barred. There are no fucking rules. I will cut your kneecaps off. I will tackle. I will tackle. I am Courtney. bringing the entire Napa team a big old steaming plate of fajitas, no. and I'm going to bring it in there, and I'm going to warm up the funny car. I will tie I Stevie's shoelaces to Courtney's pigtails. <laughs> fuck you both up, and I'm going to be the first one to run. I got Allie. Allie's the key to everything around Caps, and I got Allie, so right. both you guys are screwed. Yeah. This, yeah. this is war, Mitchell. It does war. have you there. But thank you for coming yeah. on, uh, Ron. You got anything you want to say? You want to thank sponsors, plug anybody? No, so I, I've, been, I've, I've been bummed two years ago, I think. Lyle, you won Dallas two years ago? Yes, sir. Yeah, so I won Dallas when you won it, and yeah. I was pissed because I didn't get a picture with you. Mm -hmm. And we went and did our media stuff, and, and then we got done, and somehow we didn't – you were gone, or I split, or something. And well, Courtney, I and I, Courtney and I drove it back, but we did our we did our winter circle stuff behind. Oh, we fucked up. And yeah, didn't we didn't. Well, we we, we a to. didn't want to wait. B, a guy told us the wrong situation. We were all jacked yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I was, trying to call, I was calling Chad, our bank shift buddy, and I'm like, "Where did Lyle go? I want to get a picture." And, and I never did. So next time, hopefully, we win together. Bring uh, your uh, bring your Dallas trophy to Norwalk. I'll bring my <laughs> Dallas trophy. In the we'll just go to the back 40 and take one by the <laughs> trash cans down there or something. All right. No out of the difference. Uh, oh, thanks for making time for us, Ron. Yeah, dude, thanks, Ron. This is a big deal to us. Yeah. yeah look, thank you. I know you're busy. We appreciate it. We're fans, uh, and we look forward to seeing you in Norwalk. So is, yes, your, is Brazil going to be on streamed anywhere? Or? Uh, so it's live on YouTube, from what I understand. I will post the link on my social media. Uh, we have testing uh, the next couple of days, qualify on Saturday and race on Sunday. So there's five races in the series here. Um, you'll see some of the craziest, most awesome race cars you've ever seen. We've got everything from nitrous and turbo powered pro mod four cylinders to front wheel drive cars to, to hot rod pro mods. And it's i uh, I'm blessed to race internationally and it's, we're going to park that Sydney Frigo Artovenco racing Chevelle in the winter circle and I'm going to do a keg stand in the winter circle. Perfect. Nice. Watch your name. You, are you like in a cottage inn or something? What kind of hotel is that you're in? I'm not in a hotel. We're having a team barbecue. Uh, uh -huh. And that's why they keep bringing me booze and food. Uh, they're, they're, they were on a mission. My team has said they were going to get me hammered on the show. So, like, that's why food and booze keep showing up. I'm holding it together pretty good. Uh, so, we're uh, Brazil is an awesome country. If you've never been here, 
Uh, yeah. The people here is awesome. The food is awesome. Hospitality is great. And it looks exactly like you think it should look. I mean, it is lush and awesome. That's cool. Well, good luck, man. Ron, right. don't worry. This fucking train will derail at some point tonight. So just keep watching. <laughs> I'm going to run this bitch off in the ditch. I'm trying to keep it okay for you. And then as soon as you're off of here, I'm doing a keg stand. Right? I'm going to get off at this stop. And then when it takes off, you're on your own. <laughs> Listen, yeah, that's that's why we wanted you to come on early so we could really get to shake and bake yeah. after you get off. All right. For you shaking bakers, don't leave yet. There's more. Don't leave. Yes. It's about to get good. All, All right. right. Thank you, Ron. We appreciate you, man. Thanks, Ron. Yeah. See you, buddy. See you guys. Yeah. Thanks. What an so awesome cool. dude. Get Great ambassador for our sport. You can see the passion, and uh, it, it's pretty cool. Like, okay. like, let's just think about it. That question I asked him, like, do you ever stop and think about it? We just, in the last three weeks, we had Clay Milliken, Eric Anders, Ron Caps, Shaking oh. Bacons oh. on the rise. Man, it means a lot to me. These folks that we get on here, they have very busy lives in and out of the race car, and it, and I, I appreciate them uh, coming on and, and hanging out with us. That was awesome. Um, all right, so we have a lot to talk about. We've already been on here for an hour and ten minutes. Everybody take I'm, a drink. Here we go. Now we can be unprofessional. <sighs> we don't mean that in a bad way, Ron Caps. We just want to be, impress you. That's Okay. All. all right, Lyle. We got a lot of comments that I'm, I have skipped over in there that I got to tighten up a couple folks and see if I can find them. While we're talking about that, tell us what you noticed about parody while you were spectating it in Bristol. <clears throat> so, um, obviously, Epping was a complete bust that round of qualifying doesn't really count. I think you could have, I think you could qualify and run like eight forty. but in Bristol, um, I watched the, uh, the qualifying elimination combo go on. Uh, I was racing beer money. So they brought Stevie, you're familiar. They brought civil wars back to Rockingham. Love that um, race. It, that it's race. a different, it's a different look now. Obviously there's no limited street anymore. There's, you know, the X two seventy five stuff. You can only race that in like March and October. Um, they're on like a nine month hiatus, but uh, they had a they had a half track no prep deal. Took beer money there. MacFab sponsored the race. Uh, we were watching as the race went on. Uh, ended up having some mechanical failure. Beer money won first round, uh, hurt the engine, so we were out. Well, me and uh, David, who is Josh Hootie that used to help me on the pro mod, is his dad. We decided then we're driving to Bristol Sunday morning. So we were talking about, like, he pulled up the qualifying sheet and we were talking about it and whatnot. And, and I'm, you know, he's like, man, Ricky really ran good. And I'm like, well, Ricky's always going to run good. And one, he's one of the best to ever do it with a nitrous car. Um, and he's the only one running one this year. The rules haven't been adjusted per se throughout the course of the year. So that was kind of expected. Um, and then you look at the rest of it and how well the pro chargers ran. And, you know, I, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Too late, I just love right? you, Ron. Yeah. Too, too love late, you, Lonnie. We're announcing some adjustments. Woo! Hey, I wonder if we can get Lonnie on now. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut that off. I just seen Lonnie so, was talking. Anyway, about you know, and I think um, maybe a good example, maybe not. You know, Tony Wilson did a great job driving Jason Lee's um, hot rod this week. Um, a lot of people, you know, were, oh, man, the, Tony came in and, and showed him what's up. But what you got to remember is Tony is a very seasoned drag racer. He's been doing this right. for years. He's right. raced pro mod forever. This was nothing new to him, right? Like he, is he running, just got, before. yes, he is just, he just got in a super competitive uh, and, and a front running uh, NHRA pro modified car and did exactly what Tony Wilson has done his whole career and drive it well. Um, however, it's like I commented earlier on a post. I said, Cordy Enders could get in that car and run well. Like, it's that sorted out. It makes good I was a little offended, but I get what you're what? saying, but also. Well, like Erica said, you don't know, so it doesn't matter. Right. Here's um, what I can promise you. I'm going to cut you off, then I'll let you go back. No one will send Jason Lee and Tony Wilson more fruitcakes and Christmas gifts at – Christmas this year than KTR will. I might send them like a like a pony. Anyways, go ahead. All right, look. Everybody loves a pony. Not, cool. So that you took, a, your that took here. a left turn. Mm -hmm. I mean, how but, cool um, Christmas morning? There's a pony there. Courtesy but of I was, As I stood on the starting line with with greats like Todd Tuttero with a roots blown car there, you with a roots blown car there, 
the Janice family with two roots blowing cars there. And I watched side by side runs, Pro Chart versus Roots Blower. Um, Kay Belushi did not qualify. You know, like all these things go down, and I watched the Pro Charge cars just rip up and down the racetrack. Ricky would have won that race. Um, a lot of people giving him some shit about his reaction time. I was standing on the sideline. That thing stumbled coming up on the break. Had he let go when he should have let go, it blew the hood scoop off of it. Um, Ricky did what he had to do, and unfortunately, he was just late letting go when the car finally cleaned up. But I don't think it's ever been more apparent that the rules are completely fucked than when we left Bristol. Like, it is unbelievable how bad the pro charger cars are outrunning the rest of the field right now. And I, I wish that I kind of wish we'd have waited to bring Justin Bond on now um, because there's a couple points he made. And if he comes on and wants to come on, that's fine. But there's a couple points he made about effort. Oh, and, I got a comment up right here now, right now. And I want to go um, ahead. And say again. I did. I did not. I did not see that before I'll finish. And then you just take off. But the effort comments that he made, uh, very opinion based, right? Like we're, we all have opinions and they're just like everybody says, they're like assholes. Everybody has one, you know, in his opinion that they worked harder. He has a right to that opinion, but there's no way to prove like there's no data to support that. Right. Like they can say we've made 150 laps this year testing. Right. And that that's not real. They have not done that. Maybe they've made 30 or 20, but there's no data to support that they're working harder than anyone else. But at the end of the day, when, NHRA Pro Modified shows up to any given racetrack. It's the best of the best doing it. You've got Todd Tuttero tuning one. You've got Frank Manzo tuning one. You've got Stevie Jackson tuning one. You've got Steve Petty tuning 10. You've got Jamie Miller tuning nine. Like, <laughs> you know, like you've got Brad Personette tuning at least two. Uh, Justin Elks tuning a couple. Like the best of the best are doing it. And when there's when there's this big of a gap, right? Like I don't give a shit how much effort's being made. Like there is there is a parody problem and i'm not biased towards any of them if eric dillard called me next week and said i need you to drive one of my pro charge cars i would get my ass in it you know and knowing that i had an advantage now maybe these rule changes and like monty grim was talking about my tires in the burnout whatever but you would too anyway um but i just i just don't feel like it's ever been more apparent than right now that there's just such a gap and such a there's such a need for a parity adjustment right now. Like the pro charger cars are absolutely just do effortlessly donkey stomping the fuck out of the rest of the field. I would love to see a nitrous car. Stomping. Gotcha. That's effortlessly donkey, donkey yeah. stomping the fuck out of. Got it. So let me address Mike's comment. First of all, first of all, that is bullshit. There is no team in pro mod drag racing. There is no group of people and there is no one who has outworked my team since September of last year in Pro Mod Drag Racing. There's no one that's put more effort forth. There's probably no one that's spent any more money. And there's no one that's worked more hours than our team. When you look at and you talk about people working hard enough, if we have parity and that team is working hard, Belushi's car and Justin's car would run the same. Correct. Scott Tidwell and Jose's car would run the same. Correct. Two, and that's all I have to say about parody. You don't even have to say anything else. You don't have, That's you all just, I've got to say about yeah. that. You have two teams with unlimited budgets that test all the time, no holds barred with the same crew chief. If those cars don't average running the same over the season, we don't have parody. Now, Lonnie hopping in the, in, in the chat and saying that we may have some smoky rule changes coming out in the morning has my boy parts tingling. Uh, so, <laughs> and I, was, so I was standing – Go ahead. Hopefully, uh, they see a little bit of what we see. They're going to do a service to the fans and make it uh, <laughs> make it where uh, everybody can win. Uh, my what guys, is that word? That word is fun. That means fun. I keep seeing it. People keep saying yeah. that. So, I don't know what that means. Up, I mean, whatever. I don't even know how to say it. It means fun in a glass. Yeah, don't know. So when, I was, when I was standing on the starting line. I'm going to conjure one up. Let me use my Stevie powers to just conjure one. All right, one's going to show up in five minutes. Okay. Um, I was standing on the starting line uh, in the later rounds when it when the Roots cars were getting pushed to the wayside as the Pro Charger cars outran them by several hundred. Cool, those and, I would, okay. and I would listen, and, and I was watching crew chiefs turn around that may or may not tune both cars or know that 
that's all it had and listen to them say, man, that's just all the roots has got, man. That's a great run, man. That's just all it's got. That's just all it's got. That's just all it's got. And watching the, the pro charger car outrun it by three, four, five, six hundreds, however fast they went. Um, it was, it's never been more apparent. So there you go. It is, it's, it's fucked Lonnie. And if I was Guido right now, I would give you a, just a complete ass grilling about something, but I'm not. So that's all I've got. Marcus Bird. Guido's answer, cool. Marcus Bird answer to that is negative or 2034 or 44 or 54. Yeah, I heard he was over there. Uh no, he was not. That's a lie. That's Marcus Burt trying to start stir some shit up, is what that is. I about. love it. I love it too. I love Marcus Burt. Um, I'm gonna it. Lonnie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. Um, but oh my gosh, while, poor Lonnie. He's like getting kicked but in the while head. while we're on the subject of it, the Pro Stalkers had some tech issues this weekend here at Bristol that I'd like to talk about and get y'all's opinion oh. on. Um, we always, always way early in the morning. And we don't weigh again until our qualifying runs are done or until elimination round is done. That was good, Stevie. You called it because I feel like you ordered it. But anyway. All right, my boys down the hill are taking care of me. Go ahead. Anyway, we always weigh in the morning. First thing. Nothing, no issues, no nothing. Weigh at the end of the day. It's pretty there. We go to the scales um, in the morning and they tell us basically it's going to get lighter through the day. As the sun goes down, as it gets hotter, it's going to get lighter. We kind of Friday are like, okay, that's weird to get a little warning of that. Uh, one of Bo's runs gets thrown out because we go away in the morning. He's good. Change nothing. Way after the run, we're short five pounds. As fans may not know, it goes in five pound increments. So if you're short one pound, you're short five pounds. Um, one of Bo's runs got thrown out. He went from like 11th to 5th. And uh, that run got thrown out. And on race day, Richard told all of the teams, go away, like before you service, before whenever they call you to the lanes, way again. So we didn't change anything from Saturday night where they were right on at 50, go away in the morning and they're at 75 and Richard just loses his shit. My whole point of this is the inconsistency. How does that happen? And I'm not a driver. I'm not a crew chief. I'm just a PR girl. How is it with no moisture, no rain, that a scale can be that inconsistent, A, and B, how is it that they can basically just tell you you're going to be 20 pounds lighter in four hours, just make adjustments for it, and that be enough? First of all, at least they told y'all that. So we scaled Sydney Frigo's car more times this event than we have at the last mm -hmm. three. We go up. Set, uh, Friday morning, we scale it. It's perfect. I put five pounds in it above Safety. what it's supposed to weigh. My Q1 run gets thrown out because I'm five pounds light. Okay. I get pissed off and put 10 in it. We go up for Q2 and it's dead on. I put five in it again. It's dead on. By the time we got done, and it, like I don't, I'm not one of these guys that guesses at how much weight we have in the car. I have a spreadsheet. I know exactly how many pounds are in every single weight tab that we have. I weigh Sydney every day. So like it's, I know what the car weighs without him. I know what it weighs with him before and after a run. I've got 25 pounds of weight in yep. the car, more than what it's supposed to be by Sunday E1. So it, that is challenging. Uh, the fact that they told you guys the scales are going to change and didn't tell us it didn't affect well, us. They didn't, they didn't, to, to be better. fair, to be fair, this was, um, I, I feel like they were dealing with some issues. And again, Lonnie, Lonnie's always really good. He's fair. He's, he communicates all the things, but like my little tiny brain compared to y'all's two of what this is, I'm down there every single time we weigh, like it may be an issue five pounds here and there, but this is the first race in a long time where I feel like there's just been a very open 25 pound swing. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty crazy. I did hear that. You don't say that unless there's a strong head or tailwind. Uh, there was oh. no wind. There wasn't. There was nothing. And that's that's what was confusing to me. I'm saying you don't normally see that unless there is one or the other. Yeah. So that what how does that even happen? Like I'm literally pounds, asking, I'm literally asking y'all this because you know more. Like, how does that happen? <laughs> Oftentimes it's kind of like uh, you know, people say you just never really know what might happen during these times. Cool. So no answer. Anyway, all right. Well, that was the issue I had with the with that over the weekend. 
The uh, all together, I think it was a great event. I think tech department acknowledging the fact that there is an issue is a great thing. Mm-hmm. I think Lonnie's got a good heart, and we when we had him on here, it was one of our best shows ever. I think that they want to do the, the right thing. I don't think that they know how to slow the pro charger down. I don't think because they've done a lot. Like no one can say NHRA has not tried to slow down the pro chargers. They have, uh, but I don't think you know now that we've got a team out there that's holding it to the floor and running it to the finish line, uh, it, it definitely will make their job a little easier. You you nailed it. Lonnie does have a heart. Lonnie's been a racer before, and I think that that makes the difference of it, is he's been in every shoe that he's dealing with there, and he's fair. Like I said, he communicates. That's nothing to him personally, um, but I just think it's it's unfortunate, the shit he has to deal with. Yeah, I hear I see, man, the comments, chats are, are hot about this deal. Can we talk about Bristol results soon? Uh, yeah, let's do it right now. Let's do it. Let's go ahead. If I'm just ready. <laughs> Fire that beautiful bean, bean footage. Let's talk about Bristol results. Let's go. Because I noticed that someone won in Pro Stock that hasn't won yet this year. My little – or well, she's my little sister mentally. My physically big sister. Erica, finally, and you called it. We're starting with Pro Stock because y'all let me speak. You called it. I feel like last week, and y'all tell me in the comments right now. I want to hear it. I feel like the shake and bake got an Erica Enders that we have never freaking seen on the internet before. She was, I get that Erica all the time. Lyle, Stevie, you know that Erica, but she does not let that come out very much. She was real. No. She was vulnerable. She was she funny. Cussed. She cussed on the, on the internet. She cussed. She talked about Bruce Jenner. <laughs> but what I think that you saw is that it's like I said, you, you already have a, a fantastic driver. You've already got a top-notch car and a top-notch team. You just need a little nudge to make everybody comfortable and have fun and lighten up. And I'm not crediting Shake and Bake for Erica winning. She already should have been winning. I am. I think. Yeah, no, you you said it. You're putting that stake in the ground. But what I do think is you get somebody that's good at what they do and you get a team that's good at what they do, having fun and remembering why we do what we do and how, how blessed we are to get to race cars for a living, you see winning happen. But it, I mean, like we, we talked about, and she said this, like, I, want, I don't want to say we found something because we've thought we did before, but we knew. We knew we found what we found in Chicago and that if the cards fell the way that they may, um, that she would win that deal. But she won on a whole shot, second round. That deal with Greg was unfortunate, um, but I think yeah. we were going to – I think she was she was really disappointed that she didn't get to race him. Like a lot of people were saying, oh, I'm sure they were pumped. It was, you know, competition by – no. If you know Eric Enders, she was disappointed in that race car that she didn't get to actually race him. Uh, but then the finals with her being 15, like like I said on the show last week, when that bitch has a pony, that bitch will ride. And she awesome. rode, and it was awesome. She drove – like when, when Erica's driving like that, I'm not going to – she's – not unbeatable. Nobody ever is, but it is no. fucking tough to be her when she's driving. She's but it's her. all of a sudden we go we go from number fifteen yeah, and she's points. pissed off. I know, but it's eight. blood and water. It's like it's like the worst thing you can do to somebody that's a shark is give them a little taste yeah. of blood because now it doesn't stop. Like now she wants. Now she knows she can, right? And it's like I keep telling Sydney when we find our groove and we 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 had a really good get healthy weekend this race when we find our groove and we we start heading that direction, you're not going to stop it. Like it's just going to come and beat your eyeballs out. Yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. Well, I, I, said, the, I said the same thing about Chris Thorne. You know, Chris Thorne has kind of picked up some momentum over the past couple races and he's another one. You fucking let, you let that team get on a roll as good as Chris Thorne drives and it is not going to be good for the rest. Of I them. thought, I thought Manny was going to let him sit there again the other day. Ma'am. <laughs> Man, I was Ruining standing on the starting life. line clapping like a fan. Ruining my life. I loved it. So anyway, let's move on. To other classes we got. We already talked about him. Uh, Justin Ashley doubling up, just getting it done. One of the most thankful dudes on the planet. Uh, Ron Caps, we covered that. Uh, Gage. Gage. Shut up, Ford. Pro Stock Steve um, Johnson gets it done on a red light. That's the only so, reason, though. But still, you're you're you got to be in the position to win. He was in the position to win to get it done on a red light. 
I mean, I won Indy the same way. Like, I was just in the position to win on lights in a row. But, yeah, I mean, Gage, what, he had he had not lost a round of racing. Until it would have final. been 15. He had 14 straight round wins. His NHRA record was 0 and 14. 14 or 14 and 0, sorry, Champagne. 14 and 0. That's pretty impressive. And I don't know. I was, wish, uh, what was the stat guy's name? Lewis. I wish he was on here and we could. Lewis Bloom. That would be awesome. Freaking write that down. But like, I want to know who else has started their career in the history of the sport the way that Gage did. There's, there there's, I don't there feel can't like be many, if any. Tanner Gray came in and, and ran yeah. very well. Uh, not as dominant as Gage, but, but came in and, and dominated like that. It's not uncommon in our sport to see, and I can tell you from watching Lyle and watching me and watching some of these guys, it's not uncommon to come in and, and see the driver spectacularly perform the first season. Two reasons. One, you're hungry, you're as hungry as you'll ever be. Two, you probably haven't crashed good yet. You got <laughs> so, nothing to lose. Uh, you have nothing to lose. But it's rare that you have the, the vehicle and the driver doing that at the same time in the beginning. People are saying mm-hmm. Dave Schultz, good call out. Gary yep, Selzy, yep. how yep. that started. Won the first two. Okay, this is good. Yep, and Selzy, man, Selzy was awesome when I was a kid. Selzy watching was the man. Race. That's that's the first mustache it's I best loved. Handlebar mustache in the world. I love Hagen, kid. but Selzy had a great handlebar mustache. Selzy's kid is like just killing it. Dominique, he's killing it in the dirt world. And the I don't know what he yeah. does. He does some kind of roundy round shit, but he's killing it out there. Um, so what, else? Got, what else? What else? Yeah, Stevie cool. J. And I want to. I want to just have a, a conflict of uh, of interest. To the announcers, Reinhardt, Costello, and Loans. When you say Stevie J, every single time that they're up there Don't running the motorcycle, that's me. I'm Stevie J. I was Stevie J before Stevie J was Stevie J. I'm claiming it. So, like, part of that's because my kindergarten teacher would yell at me and say, "Stevie J, put that blah, 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 back up." So stop doing it. Call him something else. I feel like he's like, never been Steve. Yeah, that's he's what they Steve. Call. You're Stevie. Yeah. So there's a couple people in here saying that Gage ran last year and didn't win much Gage race last year. But it's that goes back to what I said, just like Tony Wilson coming over into Jason Lee's car. Like Tony Wilson could have raced in a, uh, a lesser performing car and would not have won and done as well as he did. But you put Gage Herrera on the best bike in the country with the best tuner in the country. And those are the results you get. You put Tony Wilson, who's a good driver in a really good car, and they should have won. They probably should have won both races. Just mechanical failures bit them. Um, it's tough to win over here. But, yeah, I mean, I knew Gage ran a little bit, but you've put him on a bike he can win on, and that's all he's fucking done. So, I Artavenko Racing is taking out the Coast Racing Team uh, to, to dinner, or we're going to cater in dinner to us in Norwalk. Sorry. Um, can we talk a little bit about Matt Smith? Yeah, let's talk about Matt Smith, and we're going to talk about some right on track episode that sprung loose this week. Let's talk about. Oh Matt yeah, Smith. yeah, yeah. I oh, just. I, what is that noise? Does no one hear it but me? That like the. That's okay. a. Uh, that is a large truck driving by. Oh okay. I just want to make sure it wasn't having a seizure. Um, oh. I just like. Champagne. W- yeah. We've seen, you know, we're we're getting into the heat of the season. We've seen with Ron and Erica finally getting that monkey off their back. The early bugs of the season are kind of starting to to work themselves out. And freaking Matt Smith can't catch a break. Mm-mm. Cannot catch a break. Puts the wrong. It's it's roulette. <clears throat> if you if you bet on red seventy five times, you can't be surprised when black hits a few times. Won a lot. He's done well. It's it's just the other side of the coin, you know. It is, and it was some. It was just something crazy this weekend of just a, a happenstance. They're 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 the apple don't far far from the tree. He knows how to race. When they come into the countdown, he's going to be running good. He is, Why but on the other other end of that stick, it's kind of cool to see that that Angie's semifinal, 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 and kind of yeah. taking that flagship. And even Chip, I kind of thought I had this weird hunch because I'm a witch. If y'all don't know, I'm a little bit of a witch. Um, I kind of had this weird hunch that Angie was get- not really. I'm Christian. Uh, that Angie was going to be the one to take Gage. That Angie was be the one to take Gage out the other day. Shut up! My dad's watching. You ride a broom faster than anybody I've ever seen ride one. God dang right. Pigtails just direct straight out the back. 
like Harry, you make Harry Potter look slow. Mm. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Anyway, she's been running awesome. I'm done. Uh, she's been doing good, and she will definitely win this year also. So, okay, I just wanted to mention bikes. Y'all keep talking about All right, we time. got dirt bikes. We got Pro Stock. We've talked about – let's talk about promo. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So, we had – I don't know if y'all noticed uh, Mike Castellana blazing the scoreboards down in my old hot rod, but uh, Frank Manzo, Larry Morgan, Mike Castellana driving the wheels off that thing had uh, done an exceptional job at the last two races. Um, it was wonderful watching uh, Tony Wilson come out and destroy the rest of the Pro Chargers by 500s. It'd be kind of like if I showed up at a bass fishing tournament and just beat Roland Martin by 20 pounds. Same type of thing. Shouldn't happen. But it's good seeing them run that thing to the finish line. Got no sand leaking out of that. Who else was running good in Pro Mod right now? Uh, James Bond still running good. Who else we got? Ricky ran really well. Yeah, kind of everybody knew going in. Daddy? Ricky, uh, it, we all knew that if Ricky didn't win game uh, okay. Bristol, it would just be because okay. something happened. Uh, Bristol is nitrous racing weather, and uh, he did good. Ran very well. Um, the fact that he was outrun and outqualified by a boosted car in Bristol uh, is shocking. Shocking. But is it? But is it, though? If you can't win Bristol with a nitrous car and you can't go low ET in Bristol with a nitrous car, where can you win? Who's over there? Who are you smirking at? Is it cord? Oh, thank you. Why did – William, what is he – other enders don't know who Larry Morgan is. What do you mean? Larry Morgan's the man. Uh, yeah, Larry Morgan is doing a great job with that hot rod. Frank Manzo has the awesomest alcohol funny car wing I've ever seen on a pro mod in there. And that yes, thing is, it is great. I miss it. I want to just grab it one time. I want to see if Michael let me take it down through there. I'm going to beat both y'all on the Ron Caps thing. I want a, some kind of betting <laughs> thing on the shake and bake. I will be the first Lyle. one to if warm you up his funny car. Beat Lyle and I to warm up Ron Caps car in it will be because you had someone kneecap me in the pits. Maybe I will. But shake and bake, write it down. I will win. Okay. You're going to fly in a day fucking late. Doesn't matter. Right. Let, let's, not, let's, not forget, let's not forget Let's not forget who can't go to the airport and spend an extra six hours there. Right. You can't even get a commercial flight. And no matter what, you're going to get delayed. I'll be there on Wednesday warming that thing up. It's going to be great. Anyways, aside from that, uh, congratulations to Chris Thorne, Jamie Miller for smoking the field again. First win this season for those guys. When you come off of the dominating season that they had last year, it's a little bit of the, the Ron Caps and the Erica, the thing that we're talking about. It's very difficult to get back to the winner's circle. Uh, they did a good job turning that thing around on Sunday and running well. Uh, I was impressed with Todd Tuttero's runs. J.R. Gray ran good. I think overall uh, most of the folks did a good job in Bristol for what they had to work with. And given given all the things also, let's give NHRA a little clap clap here that we don't do much. Making I, the decision to run first round before that string of storms came in was the best thing they could have done. Now waking up at six in the morning, I was like, fuck them. Sorry, dad. I was like, screw them. But once we got that done and then waited it out, we would have been there till 10 o'clock had we not done that. So that was a really good proactive decision on their end. Uh, yes, and I very much uh, applaud them for doing that. One thing about NHRA is most of the time they lead by example and they lead with with a with a, a, a good decision making skill set. Nobody wanted to get we for for the casual fan they don't know we get to the racetrack four hours before we run E one on Sunday. So when we run at ten a.m. and you guys wake up and watch us race, we got there at six, which means we woke up at four thirty to leave the hotel at five. So you know it's an early day, but. That was that was looking at the weather and being proactive instead of being reactive and and kudos to NHRA for that. It hey, was somebody proof. somebody bring up Randy and Eli's comment. Ooh, gotcha. uh, Randy, I don't know what his name was, but obviously we're thinking about him. Oh man, uh, his friend who is a watcher of the show had a heart attack last night. I just didn't want to miss that. Man, I hate that. Oh. And I, I uh, our well wishes to him. I hope he's good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's 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 tough. 
Uh, that's mm, that's uh, that's tough. Um, on a lighter note, um, Grady Watkins. I want to shout out to Campsite Twenty Five in Bristol. So I get to the racetrack on Thursday. My standard mo when I get to the racetrack is to walk the racetrack. I like to go out there and feel it. I like to touch it. I like to just become one with it. As soon as I get out there, Clay Milliken FaceTimes me. Right. And I'm like, okay, I'm on the starting line. If Clay calls me or FaceTime me, me, I answer normally. So I'm like, Clay, what are you doing? He's like, oh, not much. What are you doing? I said, I'm out here walking the track. He said, look up to your left. He said, about the quarter mile, about a thousand foot. I do. He said, I need you to, uh, if you're not doing anything, come up here. He said, uh, I was cruising by. This is going to make some of y'all tear up. He said, I was cruising through the campground, as I sometimes do, and uh, I was riding by, and somebody yelled, shake and bake. So I pulled in there, and uh, the campsite uh, folks were in there, wanted to know if he knew me. They said they had a gift for me. Folks next door did. So Clay calls, and he's like, hey, I need you to come up to campsite number 25 uh, <laughs> because, because there's some fans up here who got a gift for you. They're shaking bakers. I go up there, hang out with Clay, hang out with some folks. Uh, they got some some food and some booze for me. Uh, we we did a little drinking together and hung out. And it's just weird, you know, when the, the the folks that are Clay Milliken fans understand the significance of that. But it was pretty cool. We went out, we went up several times throughout the event and hung out with those folks. And thank you for your hospitality. Um, that is, and, it is so insane how that always just works. Yeah, and it, and it like, was weird. That's we crazy. Right I was like, are you kidding? Like, are you kidding? I watched every everything I watched of the event that we weren't racing at this weekend, I watched from Campsite 25, so it was pretty cool. And they, they didn't – I mean, obviously, those people didn't choose Campsite 25. No, like they're giving kids. them there. As a, as a former person given. who was a camper there with a – when I was married yep. to Adam, we had our fifth wheel, you just got what you got. That's not a, a choice. Yeah, and thanks to Lynn uh, and Bruce, um, all the bullet, the four roses. My four roses and my bullet had a hole in it also, kind of like the, the Buffalo Trace, but we had a good time. Thank you. Gosh darn it. I had a ton you of people. Gotta hate it. I, I watched from the fence a couple of times because, like I said last week, I love watching at Bristol. There's very few places where I actually just go watch, and I'm on the fence, and I had – People coming up to us like crazy. It gets more and more hectic every week with the shaken bakers. It's wild. We're driving Erica's car to the starting line again, and people are pointing and waving, and she waved, and swear to God, this guy goes, no, her, shake and bake. And I was like, <laughs> 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 Yeah, it was, it was good. So thanks Man. to the fans. Uh, so we got that. We already talked about funny car. We already talked about top fuel. Um, so – my mind is set on this. What do you got? Oh well, we can we can take it to the end, but we do have PDRA coming up this weekend if we want to do any kind of pick. No, we definitely got to do PDRA. We also have to talk about the fact that tomorrow for me, Lonnie Grimm is in an hour and forty seven minutes. I'm going to be up sitting Indian style on NHRA.com, ready for this new adjustment that we have. So let's talk about PDRA. I did, Selena. I did. Um, yeah, we're going to uh, Bud's Creek this weekend. I leave early Friday morning to head out to Bud's Creek. Spent oh. many, 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 many a time in Rising Sun, Maryland. Picture is the only reason I drove from Boston to Maple Grove. Well, that's freaking awesome. That car All right, so just we got it. Brad Furman is hooking the Shake and Bake team up with more booze at the next race. Thank you. Yes, uh, so, who do you see like? You did Did anybody see Jake? <laughs> for Team Musi this past weekend? Or was that just me? I that was just you. That. The internet saw it. The internet was, was there. Well, tell us what the internet saw. I just saw that they were doing a little MPK tuning. I didn't know what was going on there. I didn't know if we had any, y'all are PDRAers. I didn't know if y'all had any, any inside scoop. I am, listen, I am one week at a time. If there's an NHRA race, that's what I'm doing. Now that we're Tuesday at PDRA, that's where I'm at. <laughs> I just know that right, Kyle, Kelly, Kyle Kelly won Virginia for the third year in a row, but this time with a man card with the old screw blower. Jang -a -lang. Who's tuning that thing? My hero, my buddy, a beard uh, similar to yourself, Jeff Pierce is working on that thing. Oh, well, that's when you see When you see Pierce, badass. He's on the horse power to the ground. 
Yes. Tell the tell the viewers because you guys are the tuner extraordinaires when we make these picks where we're going, what the weather's going to be like, what power adder is going to be the dominant one here at Bud's Creek. Yeah, I've messed that up. Somebody said, uh, yeah, maybe it's not in Rising Sun. No, it's not. Where's Bud's Creek? Maryland. It's in Maryland. It's Fredericksburg. I thought it was in Rising Sun. Are you sure it's not in Rising Sun? I'm 99.8% sure, but I've been wrong before. All right. Well, if it's not Rising Sun, where is it? I mean, Fredericksburg. It's Mechanicsville, Maryland. Mechanicsville, that was it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what happened. Son of a biscuit. When you start Listen, there's that. no easy way to fly into that place. When I was booking this, I'm there. You either yeah, gotta go like it's getting Stevie's plane land that son of a bitch on the racetrack. I can't. My plane's in Brazil. I don't know if it'll make it back. I had to. Well, therefore, up the take All right. me. let's talk about let's talk about Pro Boost. Do we have any parity in Pro Boost, or do the Pro Chargers still have seven hundreds there also? That's a question for y'all. You do the damn. You do the reporting. What do you mean? Jason, Ar Jason Harris absolutely tuner. donkey stomped the field at the last race. But he did so. it because he outdrove him, and and he I, I like him to win this race too. Well, I'm not saying he that he had a he. I'm saying he donkey stomped him in every aspect. But I like him to win this race too. Do you? Yeah. Who do you like in Pro Boost? Courtney, who do you like? Yeah, that's you, Gordon. Oh, I thought we were talking about Lyle. Both, it's fucking your turn. I, I said I like him. Jason Harris. Okay. Who do you like in Pro Boost? Come on. You you have more inside scoop than anybody. You should have more. I inside. know, but I feel weird. Do you have on your uh, it because then you have I your have own to your librarian skirt, Courtney? Everybody keeps asking about the librarian skirt. No, no. No. You know, you know, I'm a very confident woman. And when I was getting dressed for this show tonight, I was not confident because I was worried I was going to get bullied about what I wore. Oh, oh, are you, oh, you got bullied. Did you get I said, bullied? No, I remember it very clearly. I leaned this way to get a piece of paper to play a game with my sister, and you called me out on my fucking skirt. Well, then you shouldn't have worn it. It's comfortable. It's what I wear on the couch. It's like a like sweatsuit. You just got off, off of reenactment of little house on the prairie or something whatever dog <laughs> whatever dog um i'm honestly oh, like God. i know stevie's not here but i'm gonna say i'm always hesitant to pick for pdra because i because of the job that i do do there um because anytime i do something those mfers call me out like right before we start the microphone they're like oh you didn't pick me for this you said this on the shake and bake show and i love it because they're watching it but because I am the reporter and the commentator, I feel like I'm in a weird spot, but I'm a big fan of momentum and a big fan of that. And so even before you said that, I, I would have to say that it might be party time again. So we have three. So is, is it a party time sweep? Party time sweep? You, that's what I had on my paper for me. ZZ Top fan, I'm going to send you a fruitcake too. All right, pro nitrous. I like Hall stick with. I I was gonna say I feel like there's Halsey's the kind of guy who he's coming in hot after some shit like that. Well, I don't even. I mean, Halsey, yes, but Brandon Schweitzer is 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 the team. I feel like they team. got they got something to prove. Today. But Brandon's Brandon's coming in hot. And I, I like Halsey. What do you think? Well, dang, Halsey tweet. I almost want to say Jay Cox, though. He's been so close I was gonna pick, and he's there. I was going to pick Tommy Franklin, but I agree with Stevie that Brandon Schweitzer's got a chip on his shoulder after last race, and they're going to go up to Maryland where it's going to get real good, real fast. Yeah. And Brandon is going to. Will not be close. It won't yeah. be close. I think Jay will be at least semis. I think Jay's Jay will be. Runs like he's got two 34 Jets. Um, what do we think for, I don't know what's going on in the pro stock world. Um, what's going to happen with powers and all that. I'll get some, I'll do some, as my guy on Barstool Sports says, Jack Fab, uh, journalisming. I'll do some journalisming and figure out what's going on on Friday. I'm um, going to go with, uh, drink water to double up. Are you? Mm -hmm. 
I can't step on a clutch and win a race. I can step off one. I don't normally pick Mountain Motor Pro Stock because I don't have a good enough feel for the class. So I kind of like ride along with you guys. I do love watching it. I just He's don't not. Know. Lyle's probably right. Because here's the other thing about that, and I've got more of an insight there. Drinkwater, yes, he won the race, but he feels like he didn't win the race because uh, this the finals were a competition by. And so he wants to win a race, and he can win a race, and he's one of the best drivers there is. But he ran good. He did run good, but he didn't race anybody in the finals, and he really yeah, wanted to. Still even, had, he still had to fucking get there. Even with the interview right before I interviewed him, he's like, I didn't even have to. Like, that was weird. I didn't have to win, you know, but – when you got a driver like that and you got Johnny Placino tuning him, but also here's the other thing. Johnny Placino's tuning him, but Johnny Placino is also driving and still also one of the best leavers in the class. And I think that deep in his soul, and I may get a text about this later, I think deep in his soul that he feels like he's got to do something on that end too. So if he can get enough tuning power on his car, uh, decision-making power, I think he'll be in the mix too. Stevie's like, yeah, who gives a fuck? Yep. <laughs> That's not what I'm thinking. <laughs> not what I'm thinking uh, right now. I think uh, all three uh, of that comment down there, I think all three of us were like a, a pack of uh, wild gerbils. In our, in our I would say life. wild wolves or something. I don't know if we'd be the wild gerbils. No, 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 no we're, we're absolutely not wolves. Not at all. I think, I think a pack of wild, rabid gerbils. Metalhead, don't worry. I'm working on a new Up in the Air episode. I ha I'm having some logistical problems with shooting Up in the Air with our current configuration, but I am it'll it'll be coming down the pipe soon. I got one more thing to say about Pro Stock, and I know I'm making this a three picker here, but also Tony Gillig on a personal level, he has been feeling very disappointed the last month, and when Tony Gillig feels disappointed, he's kind of like Erica where he's going to make sure shit happens. And so I think he may be up in the mix too. So I just want to put that on the record. Okay. It's been I'm done now. <coughs> Me too. It's been All recorded. Right. Let's, let's roll through some comments. I haven't given any way, anything away in a while. I still haven't um, my last giveaway, so I'm not giving anything away. I, the guy, whoever won last week, I just sent that information to double O shit show today. Here's the problem is at the end of the episode, we're drunk. <laughs> Ish. I, do, I look, do I look like I've been drinking? No, not today. Time. Lyle and I talked this weekend about like. Last week. Now, last week, the Lord of the Flies episode, I did look a little bit tipsy. I was. and I Because I was super pumped about having my big sissy on. I was just I couldn't a even good time. talk by the time <laughs> I, was over. I know we're I know we're getting a, a lot of comments about former Fran. I have a special former Fran coming, but not yet tonight. It depends on what NHRA does with the rule parity in the morning. Uh, before I ask my trivia question, I want to make sure I'm right. Because you guys are going to Google it, and I'm going to tell you it's wrong. Why are you doing that? See, I see. Daryl Jackson gets what I'm saying. He says, maybe Courtney shouldn't pick. She's going to have to look all these guys in the face. That's why I'm so hesitant. They literally give why? me so much shit. Well, you I'm can, just saying. You Let me tell you. They're reporting and, and still pick and tell the truth. I can, but they're also my homies. And I'm when you're oh. my homie, when you're my homie, I talk shit. So I get shit talked back. And they say, What the hell, Courtney? And I remember at World Series of Pro Mod, uh, Johnny Camp's crew chief came up to me and said, You didn't say nothing about us. And then they all there, there's just things I gotta deal with on the other end of it that I like to stay a little politically correct with these days. I know that's shocking. But anyway, I made my picks and we're here and I'm going to have to deal with it in Maryland. So here we go. I can't believe that this is the truth. What? I mean, that's crazy. This is a, all right. Anyways, so you're a pansy if you have to, if you can't look folks, folks in the face and then still pick who you think is going to win. I mean, I can. I just don't love it. All right. Oh, see, so yeah. Lots of questions about Ronnie. All right. So we have Brazil this week. We are in Norwalk next week. Then I have seven weeks off. I promise you guys I'm going to work on Ronnie over the summer. We'll have you have seven weeks off? Not seven weeks off. Seven weeks between events. <laughs> so I'm going to the Bahamas for about a month so I can get my mind correct. I'm you got suck. A 
I have to close on my house down here uh, so I can have a second place to live. And then I'm going to work on Ronnie and get ready to go race in the countdown. Also have aviation stuff coming up. Look at my YouTube channel next week or maybe the week after for a big announcement. I got something, something uh, pretty hot coming down the pipe. But Ronnie's coming. All right, so, uh, yes, Keith Haney still cries. When he sees me, he, duck, uh, he ducks behind, like, a corn dog stand or something like that. So You have seven weeks in between events. Yeah. Me and From Lyle. From now until November, Lyle, I only have one. Uh, me and Lyle are coming to Brazil. We're going to do some – we're going to fish for some – oh. Hey, if there's a – I think our Shake and Bake Week falls when Eric and I are in Greece – so we're gonna have to have Eric on that show and do like you are from Brazil. We'll be we'll be shake and bake worldwide again in July. Shake and bake worldwide. Worldwide. <laughs> All right. What other comments we got to run through here? Uh, yeah, some comments. I'm gonna get some shit away, and then I'm going to hang out with my boys and get hammered. Yep. Alrighty. Does All right, Stevie so Fast get hammered enough on the show tonight to hire me at KTR? <laughs> Hold on, I'll see that. Where's that? Uh, Tyler French at 823. Uh, yes, we're always hiring at KTR. We're looking to hire 25 people by the end of the year. Uh, Lonnie, if you'll make the right rules, if we can get roots blowers at 20 over, screws at 75 over with a 456 at 2650, and pro chargers at with a 131 with a 389 at 2750, we'll send you a case of shirts. I'm going to go get the shirt real quick because I got a question to ask the fans. Y'all talk. Okay. All right. So that's we're definitely. I'll, I'll have you a shake and bake shirt in Norwalk. I still owe you a shirt, but I'll give any. I'll give anything to your wife that she could possibly want. <laughs> hey, smash and that like button. And subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you're not, if you're not subscribed yes. to our channel, we are trying to get to forty thousand. We're at thirty-eight thousand seven hundred and four subscribers. And you guys don't know how hard it is to get. I know all these people have these millions of subscribers and stuff. Uh, we're trying to get 40,000. If you're not subscribed to our channel and you like Shake and Bake, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And so share it to all your friends and family. Right. And it's so, free to subscribe. Right. Doesn't even call it, uh, so Courtney Lou made us some shirts. If you see us wearing these at a national event, PDRA, NHRA, RVW event, we are looking for uh, – we're looking for shaking bakers. I'm okay. Thank you. We're looking for shaking bakers. We're looking for shake and bake activities, just like campsite 25. We will come hang out with you. We're going to make you famous. And uh, if you see uh, double C wearing it, she'll drink tequila with you. I wore it on the starting line because Stevie fast Jackson, you may know him told me that I wouldn't. And I wore it on the starting line for a pro stock run. And what happened? Um, I got my picture taken and my sister won. Won the whole event. <laughs> So now, but seriously, you know, if you guys feel like if we made some shake and bake maybe. merch, would y'all buy? You it? guys would want to buy it. Let us know because listen, we ain't, I don't want y'all may think we're making we, money here. We're not. No, I told them. So no. I looked at our YouTube analytics this week. Uh, we make about two cents an hour to do this, and that's real. That's that's real deal. It's about two cents an hour for watch hours to do this. So if you guys would, if you guys do want Shake and Bake merch, just put something in the comments and say you would like it. And we'll see if it's Let worth doing. Because I, I don't want to I think it is. On merch if you guys aren't going to buy it. Um, I'll Lally, tell you, when, I was, when I was wearing that this weekend, I got no shit, like harassed to a point of, where do I buy them? Where do I buy them? So I think that I think that it would work, but y'all got to let us know. Lyle, are you driving in Norwalk? Possibly. Um, it's not a hundred percent yet. I was supposed to drive in Bristol when the whole Epping rain out deal went down. It was kind of unclear as to who could drive for who I'd already subbed for the Russians once. And then they turned that into a one sub race, even though it was two races, whole deal was fucked. So I may drive in Norwalk. The only race that I know I'm probably driving for sure. Uh, will be the U.S. Nationals, but um, hopefully Norwalk uh, it's still a possibility at this point. Look, I'm already getting um, texts from my PDRA friends about why I didn't pick them. This is what I'm saying. That's all right. Yes, I'm getting a second home in Brazil. Absolutely. Shout out Corey Boss. Corey Boss. Probably, probably a third one. 
This is correct. Uh, Haney's just walked behind it. I'm going to catch peacock bass in the morning. Uh, and I think most all of us will be at Vegas. Courtney will be there. Lyle will be there with me celebrating my uh, champ, my first Christmas World Championship. Um, so, yeah, come hang out with us in Vegas. It'll be great. Let's see if we got anything else. No. Does CE's clothes fall off with the tequila? The answer is no. 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 That's a tough go, isn't it, Stevie? Nope. nope. No tequila will not help you. Nothing helps. We are definitely bribing tech at all times, anytime we can. Uh, just send that to Matt at steviefast.com. If you feel like that you like to make a lot of money and you would be a good fit for our team, uh, even if you've applied before, keep sending those resumes. I'm looking for two full-time engine development uh, guys right now to, to work on our engine development program full-time in the shop, as well as about 25 crew guys right now. So Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, CEO, too. if you like to work on cars and make money and think it's fun and you're meticulous, if you're like a superstar in every part of your life except for you don't like your job, come work for me. Uh, got there one. Okay. Let's see what else we got. I feel like we should buy merch. That's all I'm seeing. Agreed. Negative. Uh, stand in line. Oh, there we go. All right. Love you. Wow. So, Love you. Bribe Lonnie is through Lonnie's wife. Tracy's the best, though. Miss Tracy, I'm sending you a fruitcake and a case of merch. Yeah, uh, Chase, yes, Stevie does look a little toasted because he is toasted. So true story, I'm actually not. I left home. I left Augusta, Georgia at 2 p.m. yesterday. It's 10.30 p.m. in the Southern Hemisphere, and I haven't been to bed. <laughs> so go fly for like uh, you know a day and a half. We put a lot into this deal. Uh, here's, a, here's a comment. Paul Kurtz, hey, Courtney, who is the guy wearing the Quadracru shirt running – Rubbing the inside of Erica's thigh, the in car never lies. That was Chase Freeman. <laughs> and that was Chase Freeman, her roommate. And let me tell you, if she sits in the car too long, her leg falls asleep. So we rub her calf. Ain't nothing sexy going on inside a race car. There you go. Ain't nothing sexy you going ain't on inside a race car. In a professional car that's thinking nothing about no hanky panky. No, they're thinking about the Wally Wally. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that big, big, big cheese. Also, his okay. fiance Jenna would um, she would love that. <laughs> All right, we're we're going on two hours here. We're actually two hours. Let's give away a flask, Matt. We're giving away a flask. The Googlers are going to have to get this. All right, so for a shake and bake flask, tell me the fourth largest city in the world. That's Googleable. I'm gonna put it in our private chat. I'm trying to win the flask. No, Chase. I yeah. want a flask. Yeah. Somebody, somebody, somebody said mobile. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Woo! Oh man, I see one. I see one. Yeah, I see one. I'll let Matt pick who got first, and then I'll go ahead and tell you why Matt's telling us that. Population twenty-two million. Million, we're flying over that deal in a helicopter this morning, and uh, <laughs> that's who you got. <laughs> that's okay. No, I saw one before that. I meant for my, or if you're talking about what I said for my question, I'm gonna ask. No, I was looking at your oh. answer. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm just putting my answer in there for my question. In yeah, no, I already know what your question is gonna be because your answer. All right, Matt, who you got the one? Matt, Matt's asleep. Matt, Oz. I put him at I put him at the bottom there. Mm. Uh, Four twenty six Hemi. Four twenty six oh. Hemi. Population of twenty two million, and I can tell you it is stacked in like firewood. All right, Courtney. Oh, Somebody said Wuhan. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah. Okay. Well. Maybe mine came in later, Matt, but I saw one right before that. But maybe they came at the same time. Yours is different. Um, I want to know for a double O shit show, either shirt or glass, whatever he feels like sending. 
Um, who was the only other female to race a pro stock car and qualify for Jim Cunningham other than my sister? Google lied. Google did lie. Bluto, thank you for your nephew's service in the army. We appreciate it. And thank you to Garrett Williams. It was easy. Yep. There it is. Nope. Shirley Muldowney. No, nope. no. Nope. <laughs> Not the one. Um, I think uh, Bruce Young got it on my end, but we'll have to let Oz, Captain Oz. That was one Erica wanted to do last week, and I told her it was too easy. So, Halle Berry. Yep. That is correct. Bruce Young is the first. Bruce Young. So. John Force, also correct. <laughs> Send me your no, send me a screenshot of your YouTube account to Matt at StevieFast.com and I'll get uh, your information over to Courtney and I'll take care of the KTR one. Whoop whoop. I'll, I'll send right, you support your bullshit show. No, I haven't sent my last one, so I'm not I'm not giving away anything else until I send my last giveaway. Yeah, shout out to Double O Shit Show too. Been getting some uh, some promotion on the shake and bake side of things. Um and thank you for giving us some merch to give away. Before I just also before we go, I want to say Thank you, Stevie, for giving right off track some love this week because you and I had a really good conversation on the flow racing side, a little more, um, a little more on track than Shake and Bake. I feel. I think uh, so. I went back and watched it, and I'm like, damn, I can't believe I said some of that stuff. But why? Uh, that's well, it's the real side of of, of me, and because I get it out of you. Um. If you guys haven't seen uh, Courtney's episode of Right Off Track or Right On Track or Right To The Track or Headed To The Track um, this week, Right Off Track, uh, we had a very honest conversation about drag racing in general, Pro Modified, RVW, Parity, um, the roots of racing, um, where I'm at with my recuperation and where we're going. And if you guys haven't seen it, it's on Flow. It's on my YouTube channel. Uh, and I think they did a great job. And thanks, Flow, for uh, – for pushing our content too. Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Thank, you. Th thanks you for doing that. Oh yeah. The Welch racing thing. <laughs> that's all. Oh Double O shit showed me. I think he got a cease and desist. I'm not sure, but that's a, that's a whole last thing. Yeah. So why I think we crash this bad boy into the, into the runway. <laughs> Two hours yet again. Yes. Thanks. Uh, when, are we doing next show? When, are, when are we doing the next show? Are we going to do it next week? Not, Norwalk? No, no. After Norwalk. After Norwalk or two weeks? That is two weeks. Why not after Norwalk? No, I said after Norwalk. Oh, yeah, after Norwalk. Yes, after that, Norwalk. That would, that would be not next Tuesday, but the following. Yes, we'll see you guys in two weeks. We're going to have super exciting pro mod stuff. We're going to be set up with our countdown to the championship. We're going to be talking about Sydney Frigo's uh, Norwalk win, as well as all of the bullshit in drag racing that the rest of the channels won't cover. Air Kinders double up. Thank you for hanging out with us. Appreciate y'all. And this has uh, been fun. Close her out. Wow, roll that beautiful.